this. Alrighty, guys, it is time. Let's do this. Load game. What's our most recent one? I always have to analyze these times and dates. Let's see, I think it's this one. Yeah, the 22nd. It does the date opposite how I'm used to in America, where usually it's the month and then the day. This goes day then month. All right, which is probably the much more common way to do it. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> hey, Weaver Tome, I haven't killed anybody yet, directly. I don't think. <sighs> oh yeah, we barely got this started and I wanted I to end it. I know I shouldn't cry. Poor Hina. But I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. See, that kind of talk scares me. What is she talking about? Getting out of here anytime soon? <laughs> it's impossible. I can't let myself think about how much I want to get out of here. It's crazy because, like, we don't see the side of her at all. She's always been very positive and kind of aloof, you know? She's just, like, more interested in food and swimming. If I keep thinking like that, I might decide to. But eventually, this situation's gonna, like, wreck everybody. Donuts. I need to eat some donuts. That'll cheer me up, just like what I was saying. <laughs> Food and swimming. That's all she needs. Glazed donuts, twisty donuts, jelly donuts, cream-filled donut holes, malasadas. What are your guys' favorite donuts? Okay. Oh, God of donuts. I'm praying for a wonderful encounter. I'm sorry. Please forgive me for breaking the nighttime rule. But right now, for me, donuts are absolutely necessary. Oh no, don't kill Hina. Huh? I'm scared. She should not be going out at midnight. What the hell's that noise? Sounds like a printer or something. Huh? What's that sound? Hmm. It sounds like it's coming from the bathhouse. It sounds like a like a fax machine or something. I don't know. A printer. I'm super scared, but is is someone there? Ooh, glazed donuts. We actually have a Krispy Kreme very close to our house. Those glazed donuts are pretty dang good. <gasps> the <laughs> hell is this? What is going on? Is that the ghost of Chihiro? Chapter three. What is that in the background? Is that like a uh, I was going to say like a Gundam or something. That was interesting. Ooh, Boston cream. Is that with like chocolate on top and uh, the filling inside? <laughs> Crispy creme. Uh, the morning after the conclusion of the second class trial. Everyone met up in the dining hall, just like always. And I expected it to start like any other day. That's what I expected, but... <sighs> Today's count kind of sucks, huh? Toko and Byakuya uh, still refuse to show up. Um, and I haven't seen Miss Anahina uh, uh, anywhere. Hmm. She said her stomach was hurting, so she can't. Uh, so she's taking it easy in her room for today. Well, that's good. So she's still alive after that encounter with the crazy green Chihiro ghost in the locker room? Oh. That is rather unusual for her. Normally she is so full of energy, right? Mm. Which is exactly what makes me worry. So then. So, it's just the seven of us then. It's dropping fast, isn't it? It looks that way. How about that? It's times like this where the c uh, the committee chairman needs to get things going with a bang. <laughs> he, this guy is so distraught. Poor Taka, after the last case, he was like really good friends with Mondo. They were bros. So like, he just could not succumb to the fact that his friend actually did the murder. It was so sad. He's definitely having a hard time. Yeah, Sheely, I think the Boston Cream ones are the ones, probably one of my favorites too. I love that stuff. And Sheely, your favorite case that you've seen, uh, since you've only seen one case in the third game, is in the second game. Oh, cool. So I guess would you say the second game is overall your favorite from what you've experienced? Impossible. Or not. <laughs> Taka hasn't said a word since everything that happened yesterday. One look at his face showed he hadn't slept a wink last night. 
It looks kind of like a zombie. I mean, that's what you look like when you haven't slept, right? It must be because of Mondo. Oh, that was a wicked death with the motorcycle and everything. We didn't really get to see what happened to him. He just turned into a fine mist. I don't know. Uh, the two of them became so close, and then he finds out Mondo killed Chihiro. And then, having to watch Mondo get punished, there's nothing he can do about it. I can't even imagine what it must have done to him. Well. Oh yeah, Taka's definitely suffering from PTSD. And parts of it are pretty mad, but it's so funny and so crazy. I mean, yeah, any game's not going to be perfect, but... It's kind of funny is sometimes it's the overall quality that makes a game your favorite or maybe it's just like some standout moment like yep that's the one the rest of it's good but that one moment oh my gosh so i mean what's gonna happen now we haven't found a, any way out and we have no idea if help's gonna come it's not coming <laughs> it's like now i'm all depressed just thinking about it <laughs> We simply have to make the best of things, do our best to get along, and live here together in peace. <laughs> Not cool at all, Sheely. Forget about the outside world and accept this new life. That is the only hope we have now. She is so down to just live here forever. Something about that I don't trust at all. What? To live here forever? Well... Here we have every convenience. We have food, clothes, our every need is seen to. Why are you dissatisfied? <sighs> In fact, let me ask you this. What is it about the outside world that you long for? See, the problem is if you just like became very, I guess, uh, you just like dealt with it and lived here and didn't try to murder each other, that bear is going to make your life a living hell. It's going to keep making things worse and throw twists in there to make you kill somebody. That's his goal and Relentless. Ironically, you don't like the cases in the second game too much, and you don't like most of the characters, but it has your favorite character in it at that same kind of moment, right? <laughs> and are they in other, I guess, I guess it wouldn't be spoiling anything for me, but without saying the character's name, are, are they only in number two, I guess? <laughs> Is that okay? Competition, discrimination, victimization, and violence. As society grows, so does its perversion. There's a lot of competition in this house, too, or this academy. In which case, is our current situation not... <laughs> Demon angel, pretty budgie princess. Huh? Huh? Here we go. Maggie, the drone shop owner, the bunny-eyed Amazon, cat girl dog boy, Robo Justice, and the Galactic King. So he's going off on his comics, isn't he? And, and... <laughs> what I mean is, there's no 2D here. No wonder he's freaking out. There is nothing to be done. The mastermind puts such base desire to their advantage, bending you to their will. Hell, maybe he's going to kill somebody just to get some anime. You know? Okay, well, anyway, since Taka's like catatonic, hmm. as the oldest one here, I'm officially stepping up to take the lead. Oh, God. <laughs> this guy freaks out and panics when anything happens. I'm worried about this. So, we're all going to work together and spend the rest of the day searching the school. Searching? I'm right, right? W well, I mean, since the class trial is over and all... Perhaps... There should be new places for us to investigate. That's right. After the first trial, the place kind of opened up a little bit. We got a second floor. Hmm. Yeah, that's the ticket. Maybe we'll find some kind of clue this time. Well, then... Then, once we're done eating, let's split up and begin looking around. Do you have any problem with that, Celeste? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want to look around. She just wants to chill. Hmm. There may well be discovery waiting for us, which may further enrich our life here. Um, Maybe there's an anime room. Uh, no, the point is to look for clothes. And just as we were starting to come together, she barged in and ruined the conversation. Oh, no. You called for me, and so I appear. I kind of forgot about her. <laughs> we're all in danger. <laughs> mayday, mayday. I've actually never seen any kind of Gundam stuff, although I know you're talking about Gundam, which is probably some spin-off of like a pig or something. I don't know, but I've never actually really watched Gundam, actually. So they were only in the second mainline game and a spin-off one. And they were your motivation to keep going? <laughs> That's funny. It's like, I just have to see this character's arc all the way through. Thank you so much for letting us. Uh, you called for me, and so I appear. Genocide. What? Uh, nobody called for you. 
Um, um what the how come it's genocide Jill and not Toko? God, this place is just amazing. Finally, a place I can just be my murderous self. Which is why I've decided to stop holding back and spread my wings. No more hiding in a cave for me. I mean, besides her crazy face, maybe she'll be less of a jerk like this. When she was trying to hold it in, she was still very scary. <laughs> Plus, I have another battle to fight. The whole killer with a split personality thing is so overdone. I gotta destroy that stereotype. I'll fight all day and all night to murder those totally slanderous cliches. As long as you're just murdering cliches and nothing else. <laughs> She's so wild. What's funny is like we just kind of accept it. Like in a normal reality, if you found out somebody was a crazy murderer and was like wielding scissors, you'd put her down immediately or at least like, you know, tie her up and keep her almost like in a jail sort of thing, right? Just to protect yourselves. If she weren't here, my chances of survival would be up by at least 10%. See? Uh -huh. Come on, you gotta back me up here. Even the biggest stars need uh, little people to hold them up. <laughs> that laugh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and in Danganronpa, she's totally normal. Oh my gosh. I imagine the games go way overboard further in the later installments. Well, whatever else we do today, we first should eat. We can't do anything on an empty stomach. You're right. Let's hurry up and eat so we can start our investigation. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we were forced to eat breakfast with a murderer. And after our much needed but annoying meal, we set to work looking around the school. All right. I wonder if there's like a third floor open now. <laughs> Would you say that the uh, English voice actor does a better laugh than the original? Uh, let's see if there's anything back here. And you got surprised when you got batteries included with your Xbox controller? I know, it's kind of nice. Although, some people will criticize the Xbox controllers by even needing external batteries. You know, you, you, you have to use batteries. You can get rechargeable ones, of course, but the fact that it's not built into the controller. But that's actually kind of a nice thing, in my opinion, because if you want it to just, like, charge and dock, you can get stuff for that. And if you don't want that, then you can always replace the batteries, which is nice. With the PS5 controller, eventually, that controller battery is going to become weaker and weaker and weaker. And there's not much you can do about it unless you send it to a professional that can tear it open and replace the battery or if you have the skills yourself, but it's not gonna be straightforward. So I actually kind of prefer the way Xbox does their batteries, to be honest. That's impressive, Sheely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, somebody said there was noise coming from the bath, right? We even been in here before? I don't think we have. I think this is where um, Ina heard the noise coming from. Let's see. Oh, this is where that weird evil green face of Chihiro was. Lockers. There's nothing out of the ordinary about them. What about that open one? No? They have some massage chairs. That's pretty nice. And do you switch between wireless and wired? I don't do wired anymore. No particular reason, just that I just kind of like to keep away the clutter, but it's nice to never have to charge a controller and technically you get the best response time with wired, of course. There's the massage chair. It looks pretty old. Like people that do um, like professional gaming, like competitive, they're always wired controllers. Okay, there's nothing odd about that. I kind of want to check out to see if there's a third floor open or something. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh my goodness. It's great when I drag my wife into the quotes. Poor Andy. And you have rechargeable double A's for an Xbox One controller. Uh, use on your PC, lasts about 20 hours, and then a 10 second battery swap. That's so nice, isn't it? Then you don't have to plug it in and keep using it while it's charging. You just swap and keep on going wireless. And then if you really want to, you can get wireless batteries. Now this is an Xbox controller, but it's the Elite, so it has a built-in battery. But if it wasn't, you can actually buy um, 
like a battery that fits inside here and has like a little spot where you can dock it and then uh, use that until it goes dry and then get a replacement. Um, yeah, let's see if we can go to a third floor real quick because we want to explore to see if there's anything new necessarily. Oh, wait. Wasn't this blocked off before? I thought we couldn't get in here. Ah, it's open. So I guess now we can get in here too. Yeah, this used to have like like a tape all over it or something. Almost like it was a crime scene. Is that a mini fridge? A refrigerator. They must use it to keep drugs and cold stuff. Hey, we got something. <laughs> nice. What's funny is that has nothing to do with the game, Michael. That was my real life experience at my parents' house. They had a fountain and every night there'd be loud, crazy frog orgies. And it was, it was kind of ear piercing. Like sometimes I would just want to close my window so I don't have to hear it. It's a normal trash can. There's nothing inside, so I really don't need to spend any more time thinking about it. Oh, there's like nothing in here. Is that an x-ray machine? Even now, the mastermind is probably on the other side of that surveillance camera. I know that's a camera. Just thinking about it puts me on edge, but there's nothing I can really do about it. Wow. Okay, there's like nothing going on in here yet. Now, nothing against frogs. Frogs are cool. I'm, they don't freak me out or anything, but if you're like trying to play a game or watch a movie and the noise of frogs is louder than your speakers, it's a little annoying. So can I go? That only goes downstairs. I think there's another way upstairs. Let's see what he's doing here. Could it be? Nothing's changed on this floor. Hmm. The only difference is the gate blocking the stairs leading up to the third floor is gone. That's what I was hoping. There we go. <laughs> yeah, quit bogarting all the good quotes. <laughs> and the way Makato talks about that trash can makes it sound like there is something suspicious there. He's just avoiding the truth, right? He's like, well, nothing here. No reason to look at it any further. It's, it's almost like when you're trying to block somebody from seeing something, right? I guess that's where they want us to head next. I wonder what kind of crazy stuff is up there. <laughs> he sounds like, ooh, what kind of wild, wacky stuff are we going to find? It's going to be terrible. It's going to kill people. It's sounding so positive. Um, is it this way? No, there's no stairs there. Where was the stairs? Oh, I see it. Third floor. I just passed it. Right over here. There we go. You know, it's really funny. In Elden Ring... Sorry, I'm doing that Elden Ring rant. Um, it, my wife and I always got very nervous when we got invaded by another player. If you play co-op, other players can jump in and try to kill you. But now we're at the point we kind of welcome it because it seems like maybe four out of five times we end up killing the invader. So it's super fun and exciting. Uh, the third floor of Hope's Peak Academy. I wonder what we're going to find this time. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> What's up there? Okay, there's a rec room. There's the stairs down. Anything behind us? Oh yeah, there's another way to go over there. Let's check out the rec room. Hey, they got like a slot machine, dartboard, pool table. That's pretty cool. It must be fun to murder random people with your wife. They're asking for it. We're not invading them. They're invading us. They're asking for it. It is super fun, though. Hmm. So this is Let's see. a recreation room, a place for students to come and relax. I never would have imagined a school having a place like this. Oh, man. If that happened, we'd be dead, Krem. I'd be so dead. Well, no normal school would. It has a fellow shogi and even a dartboard and pool table. And look at this. <gasps> Is that anime? Oh, magazines. Maybe there's some anime stuff. They even provided us with a remarkable number of magazines. Isn't it wonderful? Those will certainly be helpful in keeping our boredom at bay. Listen oh, up. no. <laughs> ring, ring, ring. Hello there. Allow me to expound. We've got fashion, motorcycles, martial arts, video games, baseball, science, all kinds of magazines. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Oh, but nothing dirty. This is a school, after all. If you need a quick fix, check out the swimsuit mags. So then... And will you be adding to our collection as new issues come out? Too bad! 
bad. Sorry, no can do. Even if I wanted to, right now magazines are kinda... Kinda what? Watch out! Oops. Uh, nothing. Never mind. No, no, no. Anyway, that's it for my expoundation. Bye-bye. What was he trying to talk about? <laughs> hey, look, it's John. <laughs> uh, what he just said. I know, right? It bothers me, too. Most unfortunate. Life here would be that much nicer if he could add some new issues once in a while. How disappointing. Really? <laughs> the one thing you're worried about is you're not getting new magazine articles? <laughs> And I would not call that a remarkable... Th yeah, there was like, what? 12? <laughs> 12 magazines? <laughs> Maybe there's a whole bunch behind there we just can't see. There are all different kinds of magazines here on the shelf. They even have a bunch of monthly comics. Hey, Hifumi's going to be excited about that. But without getting regular updates, what's the point? I'd be happy you get something. <laughs> right, Sheely? is like, okay, I guess I can live here. <laughs> There's even a dartboard. Did Monokuma put this here, or was it always part of the school? Yeah, depending on the games, right? You know, we have so many of those uh, coins, we need to uh, start spending these. A pool table isn't normal school equipment. Is this thanks to Monokuma, or did the school buy it? I mean, at like a college or something, it's not abnormal for them to have a wet rec room with this kind of stuff. There's a copy of Othello here. I'm pretty bad at it, though. <laughs> yeah, they have this thing over here. This awesome-looking light. You know, speaking of which, getting, like, a like a neon light, like, custom-made, is really expensive. But on Amazon, I saw they have some, like, kind of very bendable lights. And uh, I'm trying to remember the brand. I think it was Govi made them or something. But you can kind of make a neon light in any shape you want with that. That's pretty cool, actually. I mean, if I didn't do a green screen and I had stuff behind me I wanted to display, I would probably do something like that for the stream. Hopeful peak. Anything I'm missing? Let's see. Uh, there's something else here. What is it pointing at? The table? There's a table here. Okay, that's what it's looking at. It's kind of similar to the desks in the classroom, but also kind of not. <laughs> That was great, thanks. That was useful. It's a beat-up old locker. It doesn't seem especially important right now, so I don't need to open it. You're investigating. Open everything. Is that liquor? This looks like some kind of bottle, but what the heck is it? <laughs> it's got Monokuma on the title. Maybe it's just for decoration or something. Yeah, I would not drink that. I would not drink that. Did I even talk to her? There is nothing to be done. I don't think I did. It is rather unfortunate about the magazines, but still. <laughs> I do believe our lives will improve significantly thanks to this little hideaway. That's better than nothing. Okay, let's see what else is here. <laughs> yeah, right? This is a table. It's similar to other tables, but also kind of not. That's like, you, you really didn't have to let me click on that item, you know? We don't have to look at everything. Okay, I, I, I think Kyoko might still be my favorite. So say goodbye to Kyoko, everybody. It would seem... So, the third floor opened up this time. After a brief investigation, it looks like there's a physics lab and an art room. Ooh. I also found a huge machine of some kind in the physics lab. I wonder what it does. Hmm. That is true. Some games just give you endless entertainment. And Minecraft is one of those. MMOs are usually what I like fall back into from time to time, but it's cool to find a game you could just play forever and ever. What is this? It's a giant archway. This is interesting. Yeah, rest in peace, Kyoko. <laughs> we knew ye well. This is the art room. Okay. Um, Hifumi, do you know there's like comics in the rec room? At first glance, this looks like any normal art room, but something about it seems off. Or multiple somethings. <laughs> well, well. Look at all this equipment. It certainly scratches that artistic itch of mine. Art supplies, of course. But they've also collected some kind of sculpting tools. So ask him about that. So, Hifumi, do you like sculptures and figurines and stuff? Yes, indeed. Well, normally, I limit myself to 2D. But figurines are like borderline 2D, so it's okay. 
I don't know how that's borderline, but okay. <laughs> I'm a fan of Tur Turanbo, Pumpkinhead, and I especially admire anything that Saburo Ronpogi makes. Pumpkinhead? <laughs> like the 80s horror creature? <laughs> Tarambo's ability to express the movement of muscles is exquisite, as seen in her Mama Cat series. Pumpkinhead is like a little sculptor fairy, representing this century's greatest quality. I had no idea Pumpkinhead was so versatile. I thought he just killed people in the woods. Uh, Saburo Ronpongi, meanwhile, is known for his Mecha Musu uh, Musumi series. That's probably that Gundam thing we saw earlier, which led to a worldwide tour. <laughs> Surely they cannot be regarded as, or they can only be regarded as the Elite Four. But one of your Elite is missing. You know nothing! Well, the Elite Three just sounds stupid now, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. Besides, that empty seat rightly belongs to me. <laughs> it begins. Today begins my reign as the legendary ruler of the next century. Good, he doesn't have any kind of illusions of grandeur. That's good to know. I see. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Fumi, you're crazy. So there's sculptures of uh, our bear here. That's cool. Is this a statue of Monokuma? Who would ever want to make something like this? Still, the quality is surprising. Maybe previous students that were here? She was the cutest one left, and now she is doomed to die in a horrible fashion. <laughs> oh, poor Chili. Oh, no. Okay, there's a lot to look at here. Shield your eyes if you're under the age of 18. There's boobies. It's a Venus statue. Yep, definitely very art roomish. There's something else right there, too, to look at. There's like three things to look at. Now I click on the other ones. You see that when I do this, there's like three circles. Let's try it over here. There we go. Now I can see a little better. Yeah, just change the angle. Hey, young daddy, how is it going? The last trial was a mind better. Seriously, that was insane. I, there were so many red herrings, and at first I thought it was him. Oh, no, now it's definitely the genocide killer. Nope, now it's somebody totally unrelated. There are paintings lining the walls. Is this really art? It looks like a bunch of crappy graffiti to me. It looks like children's drawings. That's art? Come on. <laughs> I mean, that's what my drawings would look like, honestly. Okay, then there's something back here. It looks like lockers. It's a locker. But it doesn't seem like there's anything inside. Hmm. And you found the last one to be in the best of the game. That's awesome, Sheely. I love it when they end a game on a high point. Look at this creepy statue over here. What is this? This is a statue of Neo. Ooh. I've never really heard of anyone use, using a Neo statue for a life drawing class or whatever. Is that like an ancient Greek god or something? I think, I think we've looked at everything. Yeah. I better look around a bit more. Do I just have to talk to him again? <laughs> no, he's saying the same thing. What did I miss? Oh, there's a door back here. This is like a back door to somewhere else, huh? There we go. Oh, I see. When you say the last one, you mean previous one. Yeah, not like the last one in the game, but yeah, the previous one. That was a really good one. Uh, this is the re repository that's attached to the art room. It's used to store different artsy things. Look at all those hammers or mallets. You use that with like a chisel, right? Uh, there are wooden mallets hanging on the wall. If I had to guess, I'd say they use them for making sculptures. You know, there's a lot of tools in here you could use to kill somebody too. Just saying. What is this, like a dolly? Yeah, a dolly. They must use it to move all these statues around. How the hell? There's like a picture of us there. Not me, but some of our group members. There's something on the floor. Oh, those are the three people already dead. It looks like a picture. But as I stretched out my hand to pick it up, almost as if on its own, my hand froze. Oh, we got Chihiro, Mondo, and Leon, right? Huh? What I saw in that picture was Chihiro, Leon, and Mondo. And they were smiling. What is this? Questions started racing through my head, one after the other. Why is it only these three people? What are they doing together? How come they're smiling like that? 
When was it taken? Who took it? Where's the camera they used? How'd they get it developed? And in the picture, the window in the classroom, there's no metal plate covering it. Oh, that's weird. Remember, we all have, um, uh, what do you call it? Amnesia when we came here. Like, we weren't really sure what happened. You know, I just realized I've done this a couple times. I accidentally pressed the right bumper. If you do that, it removes everything off the screen. You can't play the game this way, but if you want to take like a nice clean screenshot, you can do that. Michael, it makes me think that actually happened before this whole situation. Maybe they actually knew each other before. Maybe they also went to this academy before, but then when everything got taken over and changed around, they didn't have memories of that time. I'm not sure. It's really weird. Which must mean, whenever this picture was taken, it wasn't here at Hope's Peak? But there was no time to find an answer. All the questions floating around my head were quickly drowned out by... That's mine. Give it back. Monokuma appeared out of nowhere and snatched the photo, and any chance I had at answers evaporated. Ha! You peeked, didn't you? Well, they all had some pretty dazzling smiles, huh? Isn't that wonderful? They were definitely living their school life. It's like they ripped a page out of the Book of Youth. What's going on with that picture? Do you know? <laughs> I'm not telling you nothing. I love his little like theme song that appears when he uh, shows up. Why can't you give me a straight answer? Never mind. I don't even know why I bothered asking. All right, let's see here. Nothing on that side. There's this TV, but he pretty much says the same thing about all these screens. And of course, there's a monitor in here too. The mastermind is thorough, if nothing else. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's been older, huh? And uh, Weebatome, is that a typical visual novel feature to remove everything from the screen? I had no idea. That's really cool. Also, if I press the right bumper, then it actually auto scrolls the text, which is nice if you just want to like kick back, watch the gameplay itself until you get to a point where you need to actually do something, you know, like make a choice, I guess. That's kind of cool. I don't do that because I like to read at my own pace and take breaks to talk to you. Uh, there's not much point in worrying about it now. I should just try to forget about it. Hey, it's worth looking at, though. That's really nice, though. I like that removing everything from the screen. Kind of like a built-in photo mode, essentially. Okay. We found everything there right now. I love that the game stops you from leaving places. We did that. Which way did I come from? I came from that way. Let's go this way. And then we'll take a left. This might be where that big science machine was that uh, we heard about. Is that an elevator? No, I guess it's just a door. Oh, that's so much fun, Relentless. I never really spent a lot of time in photo mode, but I love seeing what people come up with. I mean, kind of like that Mario Maker game. I love playing people's levels. I don't necessarily want to create my own so much. This is the physics lab. It's less like a classroom and more like some kind of research institute. That is a huge machine. What are you doing, Taka? Hey, Taka, don't you think this place is some kind of research institute? Still no reaction. <laughs> like, why is he even wandering around? I'm surprised he doesn't just, like, stay in one place. Okay, let's check out this machine. This machine obviously has some kind of purpose, but... I don't know anything about physics to begin with, so I wouldn't have any clue where to start with this. And speaking of photo mode, you really wish Elden Ring had a photo mode? Uh, that game looks too good not to have one. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't do that. I wonder, is it common to have photo modes in multiplayer games? Because technically, I guess if you play an offline mode, it's not so much of a worry, but most of Elden Ring is technically multiplayer. I wonder if it has something to do with that. Oh, here's a camera. I wonder if this is the camera used to take that picture. Oh, this is a digital camera. It's got some kind of weird anime style design on it. It's kind of beat up, but it looks like it still turns on just fine. Do you guys have cameras? Like, like real cameras, not like just your phone camera? It seems like a phone's hardly anyone ever needs a real camera. I'm using a real camera right here, but look at me. It's a Sony... A6000 digital camera. It works really well, especially for this, but uh, it's really the only modern camera that I own. 
Yep, it still works. I should show the others later. Yeah, Taka's having a real tough time. Poor Taka. And you have some Polaroid cameras? Yes, we have one of those too. Ours is like real big and chunky. They had some that were like kind of more square, but the photos came out like like that. They were very vertical. I got like a slightly, I say slightly bigger one. It's almost like two of them put together, but the photos are real nice and large. And you found a cliff and someone left a message saying jump ahead and someone else said lies ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's a lot of random things in Elden Ring you'll find like that. Another thing you'll notice, anytime you see a turtle, everybody in the messages will say, is this a dog? <laughs> dog ahead. They always call turtles dogs. It's really funny. Let's take a look at this part up here. What's up with this ridiculously big machine? Oh, here he is. Watch out. What? What? You want to do some quantum leaping? Huh? That's a time machine. Pretty awesome, right? It was designed by a student right here at Hope's Peak. The ultimate physicist. Although they don't go here anymore, they died during the tragedy. <laughs> right, Katamari? What are turtles? They're very clearly dogs. Uh, a time machine? Seriously? So it can go back in time? Oh, that has his attention. Okay then, let me get in there. If I can go back to the past, then I can... This time I'll stop Mondo for sure. <laughs> oh, sorry, not possible. This particular time machine can only go back one minute. It comes in handy when you, like, leave your pizza bagels in the microwave one minute too long. But then you'd have to rush here to go back in time one minute, but if it takes you more than one minute to get here from the microwave, it was useless. One minute? Hmm? You sound disappointed. But actually, I was lying about the whole thing anyway. There's no such thing as time machines. What? Hey. Um... Honestly, it's just an air purifier. I don't believe him. Air purifier. In other words, it can produce clean air no matter where you're at. With that thing, you could even live on Mars. Oh, maybe because they were in such a secluded place, we don't have any ventilation to the outside world. They need this. But what with the discombobulating gravity and deadly low temperatures, you probably don't want to live on Mars. You got. Anyway, this machine is the reason you guys all have this delicious air. So don't go messing with it. You break it, and it's your butt. I guess he doesn't have to worry about it, huh? This huge thing is just an air purifier? And more than that, to go out of your way to say something you know will hurt someone who's already suffering. God damn you. What a jerk. What a jerk. Oh, she, the crabs are intense. And there's different kinds of crabs. Like, sometimes you'll find a crab and it's it's tough, but it's doable. And then you find another one that's slightly bigger, and it's so much more powerful. It's so dangerous. Lobsters are very scary in the game, too. I mean, they're creepy-looking creatures to begin with, but <laughs> you make them huge and dangerous. And Krem, uh... Oh, and Michael, you're saying uh, your phone camera can shoot in 4K, so you don't have a camera, right? You almost don't need it. Now, there is something to be said about a real camera versus your phone camera. The big difference is... like, the size of those lenses compared to the size of the lens on this camera. This camera can do way better shooting in the dark because the aperture can open up and let more light in, which your phone kind of has to do some software stuff to try to make up for that discrepancy. So you're, you are always gonna get slightly better pictures with this. However, at the same time, who wants to lug that around everywhere? It's just so nice to break out your phone whenever you need a quick picture, right? And you need special films for Polaroid cameras so every shot counts. That is true, right? Um, and though getting a sprocket is very alluring, you can just take a picture on your phone, print it out on a special film on the sprocket. Done. Makes it easy. And uh, the put it microwave in the room with the time machine, that's the only way it would work, right? <laughs> I have a um, S10 Plus uh, Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, it's, it's a few years old now. Never had a Pixel phone. I've heard good things about the Google Pixels, though. So they must have used these for physics experiments and stuff. There's materials, pulleys, steel plates, magnets, and all kinds of stuff I don't even recognize. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, Katamari. The best camera is the one you have on you. Looks like there's another door back here. What's this? Looks kind of like a school supply room, maybe? 
This is the equipment room. Oh, nice, Sheila. Yeah, is that their latest camera, the, the Pixel 6? It's super disorganized, and there's a strange chemical smell in the air. Uh -huh. ah, this place is so relaxing, so calming. The smell of formaldehyde is almost bear unbearable. I'm getting seriously excited! Oh my gosh. It's so tempting. Uh -huh. I just want to dunk myself right in. I thought maybe she wanted to kill somebody and put them in formaldehyde. Of course, Genocide Jack likes it. That just goes to show how disgusting it really is. Yeah, and that's really where phone cameras kind of uh, work out the best, is because it's such a powerful computer in there, it can do all kinds of processing to the image immediately, versus like with this kind of camera, usually you do that outside in Photoshop or something. I discovered lots of stuff, and it was all strange, but I don't know if any of it has an, if any of it was an actual clue. I was just getting more confused. Maybe I should head to the dining hall and talk about it with everyone else. For now, I should head to the dining hall. All right, well, we found everything. I know, right? <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like, why did you say that? That was rude. When I got back to the dining hall, the first thing I noticed was... Good, she's not dead. <laughs> she was just sick in her room. And Michael, you have a, a two-year-old phone, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and it's still going strong. I think yours is like the model after mine, pretty much, Michael, yeah. I usually go like three or four years in between phones at least, because back when cell phones were first coming out and becoming popular, uh, like, you know, smartphones, the jumps between years was huge. But now it's not quite like that. I feel like a phone can last very easily three or four years, as long as you don't break it. And it still works great has decent battery and takes great pictures. Hina? I tried to talk to her, but my voice is immediately drowned out by the others as they rushed into the dining hall. Hina. Huh? huh? I thought she was sick or something. Everyone rushed past me and crowded around Hina. Yeah, I like that better. <laughs> Relentless, just genocide her. Being surrounded by everyone like that, Hina looked really uncomfortable. Hina. Are you feeling better already? <laughs> yeah, I ate a few donuts, and that really helped a lot. You do love those donuts. Hmm. But wasn't your stomach... Uh, wasn't it your stomach that was hurting? Well... Well, my stomach, it kind of made me hungry, so you know. <laughs> I guess my memory's kind of fuzzy lately. Oh, she's acting weird. I don't like it. Hmm. They say that a goldfish will eat however much food you give it, even if it's about to burst. Mm. This mm. Anahina is pretty mm. much the same, mm. it looks like. Just a second. Hey, you of all people don't have any room to talk. Oh, burn. Well, anyway, I was worried about you. Sorry. Beside that, you... Huh? huh? <laughs> Jeez, your knockers are huge. What the heck? Did you convince them to double up on the milk production? I don't think it's how it works. Bastard! Stay away from her, fiend. Oh, gosh. See, now that's scary. That's absolutely terrifying. Yeah, 100% Katamari. At this point, pretty much the only people with, like, take real cameras places are... If you're going someplace specifically to take pictures, like on vacation or something, and you want a fancy camera, or if you use them professionally. Otherwise, there's not a huge market for it. <laughs> exactly, it's Genocide Jill, come on. Uh, um... Anyway, first things first. We should talk about what we found, right, Taka? Hmm. Right. <laughs> Taka's not gonna help you right now. Let's talk to Hina first. So, um... Um, I wasn't able to help much with the investigation, but I did make one discovery. Could it be... It didn't happen to be a donut-related discovery, did it? Those are equally as important right now. Calm down, hero. <sighs> what does that even mean? That's right! Never mind. It's about the nurse's office, remember? There's one on the first floor, right? It's open now. Well, I remember, but it's locked. Yeah! Actually, not anymore. So then... Did you find any protein in there? Or even vitamin supplements would be fine. <laughs> Poor Sakura. Give me protein. Hmm. I did look, but no dice. Just a bunch of headache medicine and over-the-counter stuff. I see. That's disappointing. Aww. It is disappointing. Like the end of the world is already here. 
Oh no, we don't have protein shakes. <laughs> Woe is me. Although, they do have a gym, so that would actually be really useful. Uh, I'm not sure it's that disappointing. Hmm. Oh, I just remembered. I saw Byakuya a little while ago. Uh, what? You Where? Where was he? Oh, he went to the science room. What? what? You're kind of scaring me. Uh, Where was he? Uh, um... He was in the locker room. Had a huge stack of books he must have got from the library. No, 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 no! So that's where he... Oh, and I had the names mixed up. He wasn't there. We actually haven't run into him yet. That guy, Byakuya. So that's where he was hiding. I won't let him get away from me. He's in trouble. I don't know if Jill's going to do something bad to him or do something naughty to him. Huh? Uh, she just ran off. Oh, yeah. She has protein coffee. She found in that storage room. Right, Sheely? That's right. <laughs> we should not concern ourselves with her. Yeah, don't concern yourself with the serial killer. What would the point of that be? It's no use. Still nothing from Taka, unless we're talking about time machines. Correct. <laughs> Definitely both. <laughs> uh, there was a rather remarkable physics lab on the third floor. In the middle of the room, there was a machine bigger than anything I've seen before. Oh yeah, apparently it's an air purifier. Huh? Huh? What's that? Something like that doing here? Hmm? Is the device really that big? Hmm. I really don't get it. Uh, oh. oh, he was like, I thought it was a time machine. Hmm. I searched the entire third floor, but all the windows in the halls and the rooms were blocked off. <sighs> I wish they'd give us a rest already. For serious, give me back my bright blue skies. <laughs> I mean, it looks like they can see outside right behind them. Those look like windows for the outside. Are, have they discussed that at all? Is that some kind of like fake drawing on the walls? Or is it like another sealed off room with like just trees there? I'm not sure. Just forget about it. Impossible. You make it sound like I dropped a nickel or something. <laughs> Green screen windows. Yeah, it could be special effects. <laughs> just to be sure, I went from one end to the other, testing each metal plate. None of them budged. So in the end... It would seem escape via the third floor is as impossible as we feared. I see. What they could do is take those mallets and the chisels and see if they can break one of those off now that they have access to that stuff. <laughs> and they just can't see the outside. Um, I mean, that looks like we're looking at the outside right behind the character, so yeah, it's probably a picture, huh? Uh, there is one piece of good news. There just so happens to be a rec room on the third floor. I have no doubt that our student life here will be even more enjoyable because of it. <laughs> hmm. Will someone join me in a game of Othello sometime? Man, look at this. I can hardly... S oh, I, I, if I move the screen over here, I can see him better. I was going to say at this angle, I can hardly see Hifumi over here. Mm -hmm. There was an art room on the third floor and had all kinds of gear. <laughs> Maybe now I'll recreate all my favorite anime characters. Oh yeah, speaking of anime, that reminds me. I found something while I was looking around. Perhaps. Hmm, a digital camera? That's what it seems like. Hmm. Does it still work? Yeah, it seems fine. You know? Well then, let's see it. What the heck? The heck? This thing's like a kid's toy. It looks like it can store like five pictures, maybe. It doesn't even have a timer or anything. Well, on top of that, its appearance seems questionable. Is this some kind of anime character? Strange. You know nothing! Rude, she's not strange. She's Princess Piggles from Demon Angel Pretty Buddy Bridges. Oh, I remember her him saying that before. I have no idea what it was. Oh, you recognize this, Hifumi. <laughs> of course I recognize it. It's a super rare prize that was given away at a bingo contest at the big anime convention. You have any idea how much I had to pay that guy to get my hands on it? Oh, is this his camera? <laughs> Wait, that's my camera. What? Damnation! Where did you find it? In the physics lab. <laughs> it's my most prized possession. I brought it here with me, but I lost it on the first day, along with my phone. I wonder if it took that picture we saw earlier. 
I kind of doubt it because that picture was pretty big. That wasn't a Polaroid. See, you won't get into the specifics, but they cannot see the outside world while they're in the school. So anything that looks like outside is probably just a picture. That makes sense. Because, yeah, they haven't really made a big, like, you know, ruckus about, oh my gosh, there's the outside right there. So I'm guessing to them it looks totally fake. <laughs> yeah, calm down, Hifumi, calm down. Let's see. Why would it have reappeared in the physics lab? However. Yeah, but look at it. What? It's got all messed up. Like when someone steals a sticker from your collection or you buy a secondhand shirt. Well, that's it. Huh? That's it? Mm, it's not mint condition. Unforgivable! <laughs> I don't need it anymore. But weren't you just saying how much it meant to you? <laughs> then may I have it? I might be able to find some sort of use for it. If any of you would like to borrow it, please feel free to ask. Hmm. Well, I can't really imagine any of us are going to need to take pictures or whatever. Yeah, true. Okay, I've heard what everyone else has to say. So now it's my turn. Hey, um, can I tell you guys something? I found something that's kind of been bothering me. What? What is it? I found this weird picture in the repository. Apparently, Monokuma took it. Huh? A weird picture? You mean, like, dirty? No, 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 not that kind of weird. It was... A picture of Leon, Mondo, and Chihiro all together. Why? Those three. And the three of them were laughing. Oh, um... It showed the three of them together laughing? When could it have been taken? And there's more. In the picture, there weren't any metal sheets covering the windows. Well, then... Then, the picture wasn't taken here. Let's see... But I don't recall hearing anything about them knowing each other before coming to the school. Well... You probably just imagined it. Monokuma cast a spell on you. No, I saw it. I'm telling you. Hmm. But if it wasn't taken before we got here, or after we got here... How about that? I'll bet they're still alive. They left the school and then took that picture. That doesn't sound quite right either. I mean, we saw them get killed. Is that right? That's impossible, after all. We saw it with our own eyes. <laughs> They're all dead. Either murdered or executed. You know, it's, it's so funny, Sheely. Like, I remember growing up being a nerd. Which, I mean, I guess depending on what you consider nerd. Like, we're all nerds. Um, everyone, I think, is a nerd for something. If you're not passionate about something, you're missing out. But, like, they had movies like Revenge of the Nerds and all those things. For all those geeky kind of things, like anime, Dungeons and Dragons, video games, stuff like that. It was, like, kind of looked down upon. You know, very few people did it. And it's, like, something I would have a hard time talking about in school growing up. Because everyone was trying to be cool. But nowadays... It's like really cool. I mean, you look at what people want to be when they grow up and most people want to be a Twitch streamer or a YouTuber or something like that. It's like a very aspirational job. I think it's a terrible idea. It's kind of like wanting to be a rock star. Like very, very, very few people hit that level where it's like, okay, this is my job now. I make a great living off of things. And it's so volatile. But I mean, whatever people want to do, that's awesome. But it's kind of funny how much has changed. It's like I can talk to so many people about video games now, and it's easy, because everyone's kind of into it. It's like so different than it was in the 80s and 90s. Okay, either murdered or executed. <laughs> John is a nerd. <laughs> and they're not the only ones. Mon uh, Monokuma killed Junko. And then there's Sayaka. That wasn't an illusion. It's real, I'm sure of it. They all died. There's no way any of them are still alive. That would almost kind of be a bummer if they're still alive. As much as I don't want these characters to die, you know, it kind of takes away those moments in a way. Like, what was the point of all if they're all still alive? So we have to figure out when that picture was taken. <sighs> Monokuma most likely forged it. I can't imagine any other possibility. Forged? Is that all there is to it? <sighs> Stay focused, man. Don't let Monokuma's bullcrap sidetrack you. <laughs> He's right, but more importantly, <laughs> on another topic, there is something that has been bothering me. I would like to discuss that. All right, what's your problem? 
And let's see, you feel it's like a lot easier to be a YouTuber or something as a job than to be a traditional celebrity if you know how to play the website. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's definitely, it's way more easily accessible than breaking into Hollywood or like mainstream music or something. But I also think there's way more people trying to do YouTube and stuff. So it's one of those things, kind of like Twitch. Like it blows my mind, but like this channel, John Cadia, we're like in the top 1% of Twitch. Like, wait, what? How is that possible when you got these people with like thousands of others watching them? But it's a numbers game. When you take all the streamers that stream have like zero people watching them, one people watching them, two people watching them, that's the majority of Twitch streams. If there's like a hundred thousand people streaming right now, less than a thousand have like more than 10 people watching them kind of thing. So it's it's wild. And YouTube's kind of the same way. For every big YouTuber you've seen, there's a ton of YouTubers that have put you know, years into it and came away with nothing kind of thing. But it is fun to try. Absolutely. Just know that it is a very, very volatile uh, marketplace. <laughs> there is something that has been bothering me, which I would like to discuss. I know that's why I talked to you again. What's bothering you, Celeste? Actually, it's about Hina. Huh? What? Me? <laughs> You said your stomach was hurt, did you not? But I believe that was a lie. What really happened? Huh? Oh, calling her out. <sighs> it varies from person to person, but whenever someone lies, they tend to have a way of showing it. It's called a tell, something you can't hide no matter how hard you try. Is that okay? Whenever Hina lies, the tip of her nose gets just a little bit longer. Huh? What? For real? <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> like Pinocchio? <laughs> But your reaction just now confirmed it. You were lying. Oh. That's not fair. <laughs> if you are going to lie, at least try to lie convincingly. Hina. Hina, be honest. Were you lying about your stomach ache? Yes. Whoa, she caught her. Nice. Uh, why would you lie about something like that? That's it. I'm sure of it. Are you feeling guilty about something? Just a second. No, that's not it at all. But... It's just, I mean, I have a reason for it. A reason? <laughs> they keep breaking out of this conversation just to make me start it again. And uh, we've been telling me, you find it a bit concerning when you watch a small streamer and they say that they're hoping to make it big and earn money out of it. It is very difficult and expecting it to happen mostly leads to disappointment, I think. Yeah, and that's what's so crazy, we is um is... Remember when Twitch leaked all those numbers of like like the biggest streamers on the market. What's wild is like, if you look at that list of all the biggest streamers and how much money they made from Twitch, you can kind of tell like how bad Twitch of a place is to try to make money to like keep yourself alive, essentially. You look at that list and even like the top 100 streamers, not too far into that 100, you start to make less than like uh, the cost of living in many places. You know, once you start making less than like 60 grand a year for certain places depending on where you live you just can't afford to like survive on your own you know you couldn't have like your own uh house you couldn't have uh, a lot of stuff you know you're like okay maybe you have to live with my parents maybe i have to have like a bunch of roommates kind of thing like it's kind of crazy how um the top people in a certain field really aren't making a livable wage now the top 10 top 20 sure but like number 85 isn't really making like a ton of money on twitch it's crazy of course, they do have stuff outside of Twitch they make as well, but uh, yeah, it's just wild. Okay, well, let's talk to Hina. Sorry. But yeah, same thing we would tell him. It's like, it's cool to have dreams. That's amazing. But just treat being a Twitch streamer or a YouTuber like being a rock star, you know? It's, it's fun to wish for and go for it, but try not to put all your eggs in that basket because the, the likelihood of you making a very livable wage doing that isn't as likely as you just kind of like picking a different career and getting a more normal job, essentially. I always have a backup plan, I guess is what I'm saying. Exactly, we would tell me. Yeah, you look at like the ninja and you're like, oh, everyone's doing that. No, <laughs> everyone's not making that, not at all. To be honest, I didn't have a stomach ache. I did it because even if I came and told you the truth, I thought you wouldn't believe me. About the green... Chihiro head in the locker? The truth. Well. I saw it. You saw what? 
A ghost. Hmm? A ghost? You mean like that ghost? Hey. Is is there more than one ghost? <laughs> Are you saying you're not making as much money as Ninja John? Probably not. Even with like my, my real job on top of Twitch. <laughs> Definitely not on Twitch. But actually, I don't know how much he makes in real life. You got to think like when somebody makes a lot of money on Twitch, so much of that is going to taxes. So much of that is going to so many things. And Twitch takes like half of it right off the top, which is kind of ridiculous. If somebody uh, makes like, you know, let's say you get uh, 20 subs, you know, at five bucks a pop, hundred dollars, you get half of that. And then depending on where the subs come from, it could be even less than that, which is kind of interesting, depending on where you, um, the subs are coming from based on like, you know, exchange rates and stuff. It might be less than the 250 or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is convinced I'm a CIA agent. I like it. Let's keep that going. And uh, Samoan, what are my thoughts surrounding Chihiro's death? That was so sad, Samoan. That's definitely, I think, the most tragic death we've had so far. Chihiro, he didn't deserve that at all. That was just heartbreaking. Oh my gosh. And it was just wrong place at the wrong time. Chihiro didn't do anything wrong, you know? That was so sad. <laughs> Chili, your cat's having a good time on your keyboard. He says he's not, but we know he just has to say that. If I told you what I did, everybody, I'd have to kill you. And I don't want to do that. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to put you in that situation. Keep you guys safe. But, I mean, ghosts are... What the heck? See, I told you you wouldn't believe me. It's not that I don't believe you, but I don't believe you. Hina. I believe you. No matter what anyone else may say, I will always believe whatever you say, no matter what. That's a terrible, terrible lesson to take from this, Sakura. <laughs> Just believe everybody, everything somebody says, no matter what. Don't do that. <laughs> so... Can you tell us exactly what happened? <laughs> so you are Monokuma. Hmm? You caught me, Michael. <laughs> Not CIA, actually Monokuma. If you really mean that, Sakura, then okay, I'll tell you. So, um... So, it happened last night. Yeah, yeah, so I'm basically a, a computer programmer. I do, like, database, software engineering, that kind of stuff. Kind of a, kind of a hacker. <laughs> kind of a hacker. I guess that's the closest way you could think of it. Although I always think of hacking as like tearing down systems. I more build them up, essentially. I was in bed, but I couldn't get sleep. I just kept thinking about everything that's happened up until now, and I ended up getting even more upset. <laughs> I am a nerd, right? <laughs> so, try and cheer myself up. I thought I'd go get some donuts. Huh? Donuts again? Honestly. And you ignored the rule regarding nighttime. Sorry. I know, sorry. I feel really bad about that. Hina. Anyway, please continue. But... Well, I left my room and headed for the warehouse. But then I started hearing a strange sound. That ghost sounds an awful lot like a printer. Well... It was coming from the direction of the bathhouse. So I headed that way. The locker was halfway open, so I took a look inside. And I saw a human shape surrounded by a pale green light. Could it be maybe a projector or something? I don't know. There is no doubt who it was. It was Chihiro. Say what? <laughs> I love his reactions. Honestly. It is simply not possible. You must be mistaken. Just as in most cases of paranormal activity, it was born from your weakened mental state. Well then. Then, all we have to go do is see for ourselves, right? Let's just go to the bathhouse and see what Hina saw. I was just there. I didn't see anything. It is a waste of time. Maybe, but there's no harm in it, right? If we don't find anything, that'll be the end of it. What? 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 You're gonna go try and see a g g ghost? Is that really a good idea? It might put a curse on you. Yeah, and the CIA joke stems from the fact that John has talked about some security measures at his workplace, and we we're like, ah, so you work for the CIA. <laughs> and I think it might have had to do with like a game we were playing at the time too, Relentless. I forget, but I think sometimes my job is kind of like come into play with the games that we're playing. And it's like, oh, you must work for that group, right? 
True. We didn't look in the locker. We saw the locker kind of open, but we didn't, like, check it out. I thought he said, like, oh, there's nothing strange about the locker, so. Which makes me assume he kind of looked at it a little bit closer, but you can't tell. What the heck? Uh, you can wait here if you want. Please. I don't want to be alone. Take me with you. Hey. What are you going to do, Celeste? There is nothing to be done. I suppose I have no choice. Hmm. How about you, Mr. Ishimaru? Are you going to wait here? <laughs> oh. Stoic as oh. always, right? Oh, that's right. I have so many jobs. I'm an android because of, um, oh, what's it called? Um, Detroit Become Human. I work for the CIA for obvious reasons. And I'm also Monokuma. I, I have many hats. Many hats. Speaking of which, at my job, I had yesterday off. Um, I was having lunch and I got a call from my manager. I missed it because I was eating. I didn't have my phone with me. And then um, my lead sent me a text and said, hey, you got to call your manager. So I'm like, oh, crap, what's wrong? What did I do? Turns out I just got a promotion, which is super exciting. Now, there's like there's like raises at work, you know, which we typically get like a raise every year to kind of keep up with inflation, depending on how well you do. But I got like like a legit promotion, basically making myself the next level up in my job of what I was before, which is super exciting. That's great. Thank you so much, Relentless. So that was fantastic news. What a great way to start a weekend, right? Now, I have been there a very long time, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting up there. I'm getting up there so, at my job. Um... Yeah, now I'm a senior hacker. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, it was right here. I saw it right here in the dressing room. Uh um, I'm getting goosebumps. Come on, come on. What the hell is he saying? La la, cut to a new Please. Shut up. What if he actually shows up? Hina. Is he trying to summon Cthulhu? <laughs> Senior hacker extraordinaire. Uh, where was it that you saw Chihiro's ghost? Well. Well, I heard a sound, and when I opened the locker. Oh, thank you for the lurk, Michael. We'll see you in a little bit. I saw some kind of pale outline of Chihiro. So, right behind you there, right? Um, is this the locker? There was something in there. Oh, he's, they just saw something on the laptop screen in the dark. Huh. Inside the locker, a laptop. What's something like that doing here? Hey. I remember seeing this. Oh, that's right. I saw it in the library before. We thought it was broken because we couldn't turn it on, right? It looks like a laptop. The laptop looks pretty old, and it's all covered in dust. So... It's broken. I tried pressing the power button earlier, but nothing happened. It's broken, huh? Too bad. Let's see. And you think it's a spell to summon Cthulhu or something? It sure sounds like it. Now, is Cthulhu is like, um open source, isn't it? I feel like it's not copyrighted or anything, even though it's the work of that HP Lovecraft, because it seems like everybody uses Cthulhu in movies, TV shows, video games. It's kind of like just out there, which is cool. But how did the laptop get from the library to here? It would seem... And I guess it's in sleep mode, but the power is definitely on. Huh. But I thought it was broken. Hmm. I would bet that Chihiro fixed it. After all, he was known to be the ultimate programmer. That's right. <laughs> That's what I'm working towards in my job. More importantly, Hina said you saw a green light, yes? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I assume like it just needed a charge or something. Uh, surely you did not mistake the light of the monitor for a ghost. Can't tell what is going on. We got a lot done in the last stream, can't tell. We actually had, well, I went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but the case was just kind of extra long, but we did finish it, which is fantastic. How are you doing, can't tell? Great to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> the Necronomicon. Klatu Verata. <laughs> I love Evil Dead. I am surprised you are able to dress yourself in the morning. Aw, oh, man, if I had the love's clueless girl's attribute, I would have fallen in love big time right now. I'm so glad I don't have it. Aww. Well, I didn't really expect to find a freaking laptop inside a freaking locker, okay? Hey, come on. It's okay. I mean, anyone can make a mistake like that. Hmm. As a matter of fact, one time I thought I spotted a gray alien, but it turned out to be a tadpole. What are you saying? 
Don't compare what happened to me to one of your stupid delusions. Don't be mean. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right? We both made a mistake. I was just trying to make you feel better. Now, what, what if I get all depressed forever now? But listen, this isn't really strange. What's this laptop doing in here? In other words... Maybe someone hid it here. But if that's the case, we found it pretty easy. Wrong. Whoever put it here, I don't think they were trying to hide it from us. Huh? What do you mean? Hey. Haven't you noticed? There's one big difference between this room and all the others. There's a difference? There's no surveillance camera. Yes, it's me. Precisely. There's no camera in here, which means this is the one spot the mastermind is blind. Hmm. Hmm. So you're saying hmm. someone put the laptop hmm. in here so the mastermind wouldn't know about it. It's true. And what Hina saw wasn't the ordinary glow of a computer screen. It was the figure of Chihiro shining pale green. Hey. I think it would be best if we investigated this laptop in a little more detail. That's the screensaver? Just a creepy glowing Chihiro face? <laughs> I'd make sure to never let my computer go to sleep. And relentless. In the US, most of Lovecraft's works were never copyrighted, renewed, so it fell into public domain. I mean, bummer for the family that could be like making bank off of that person's work. But at the same time, it's kind of nice that like it's Cthulhu and all of that stuff is just kind of so much more well known because anybody can use it if they want to. And you're doing good, can't tell. Uh, things are all hands on deck at work as nearly May, but it's fun as exhausting. The nice thing about that, can't tell, even though it's exhausting, is man, work flies by. There's never a dull moment. And before you know it, you're off work and have free time again. Hopefully you don't have to do like a ton of overtime or anything. Oh no. <laughs> Relentless, that quote reminds me of what's going on in this game right now. Okay, let's check out this laptop. It's just like Kyoko said, the display isn't on, but the laptop definitely has power. So then... So first of all, we have to wake it up. Right. I started hitting random buttons on the keyboard, and the display instantly began to glow a pale green. Hey, there's Chihiro's face. There were a bunch of different icons on the desktop. Hey. Don't go into the homework folder. Whatever you do, don't do it. <laughs> there, the icon on the far, far left. What is it? It says Alter Ego. Hmm. Alter Ego literally means another self, I believe. In the field of artificial intelligence, it is not uncommon to create different aspects of a personality. You can consider it something like a pen name. Makoto. Could you let me see it, Makoto? With that, Kyoko moved between me and the computer. She moved the cursor over the alter ego icon, and when she double-clicked it, the screen suddenly went dark. <laughs> Experimenting with human life in The Sims is a must. I mean, I can't lie. When I first played the original in like 2000 or whenever that came out, 22 years ago, I definitely had to play around with those poor Sims. Absolutely. And Sheely, copyright was just mentioned, so now you have to say, damn Disney and their ruining of the copyright system. What are they doing, Sheely? I know they're super controlling, but like, are you referencing something in particular? And you really recently saw a screenshot of a conversation where someone made a joke about the homework folder, and the other person was like, the porn folder is even bigger, and just didn't get the joke. <laughs> yeah, when your homework folder is like 10 terabytes, there's something going on there. There's something going on there. And the SATs in early May, and then you can breathe, can't tell? Nice. Which I believe is a concept the U.S. has, uh, but you don't think actually bears much resemblance to beyond both being tests. Yeah, I think for us, we had like SAT preparation stuff we could do, and then the big test. But that was it. I don't remember much about the SATs beyond that. I think I did my SATs in a church. It was weird. It wasn't on school campus. It was like right across the street from my high school in a church. That's where I took my SATs. The screen suddenly went dark, and then a voice spoke out to it us. It really came. Sound like your hero. Master, you're here. Ah, it is that application. Chihiro's face appeared, taking up the entire display. Oh no! This guy. Oh my goodness. And, oh, I'm going to destroy that name, but Spirit, holy cow, thank you for the, uh, 
bits. I really appreciate that. It's a ghost. Get me an exorcist urgently. That's a brutal movie, The Exorcist. Have you seen that one? Um, uh, Buddha and sweet baby Jesus saved me. Calm down. It's not a ghost. What? What? <laughs> Can somebody exercise Hakakuri while we're here? Just a little bit. Just a little bit of an exorcism. The power of Christ compels you. Um. Then what is it? Anyway. I'm sure if we talk to it, we'll find out. So it's like some kind of AI we can interact with? Kyoko began to type, hands blurring across the keyboard. What are you? And then... Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. Okay, that's creepy. That's really creepy. <laughs> I always get so embarrassed introducing myself. <laughs> I love that. I relate to Hiro because I too am a big scaredy cat. I'm the ghost of Christmas past, Mother Rivers. Um, speaking of Ghost of Christmas Past, my favorite movie with that kind of story is uh, Scrooged with Bill Murray. I love that one. Um, and which is bad because you started uh, getting sleep paralysis. Oh no, I've heard that so terrifying. I don't think I've ever experienced like true sleep paralysis, but it sounds like a nightmare. I mean, it practically literally is like a waking nightmare, right? That voice. The tone and everything. Mm. It's Chihiro. I knew it. Alter Ego. I've heard about this some uh, about this kind of AI program, but I've never seen one for myself. An AI program. That's right. It's how Chihiro earned his title of Ultimate Programmer. Oh, this is Chihiro's program. The AI lives in a computer, and by repeating different tasks, it gains knowledge by growing bit by bit. Apparently. Chihiro used a support vector machine and reinforcements learning to develop it. Eventually, he came with, up with a breakthrough in artificial intelligence design. This is just the beginning of Terminator, where the AIs become so smart they decide human race isn't worth it. Support vector machine, reinforcement it's learning. True. To put it simply, it's a learning method for computers. Um, if you want to know more, that's it. just I'm Google sure it, okay? It. We don't have the internet. How can I just Google it? <laughs> Let's see. Yes, and DJ, it is a pretty creepy movie, but I'm also a big fan of horror, which probably makes it why that's my favorite version of that tale. It's It's got some fun scenes, though. It's pretty funny and also kind of heartwarming near the end, but it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, Chihiro made the Terminator. Kiss your butts goodbye. <laughs> In other words, but if this AI continues to grow, it will become more than just a piece of software to help people. Some say that AI like this might someday replace people. Exactly what we were talking about. Hmm. And that is why it is called Alter Ego. A fine choice then, I must say. Let's see. <laughs> Krem, can I be your paralysis demon? <laughs> I'll sit quietly in the corner. You know, the closest thing I've had to a paralysis demon is Gus. When Gus, and you know Gus, I mean, if you don't know Gus, <laughs> that's Gus in the middle of those three dogs right there. He's he's a small dog, but he's hefty. The pup weighs like 28, 29 pounds or something. If he has to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, he just climbs on top of me, paws on my chest, and stares me in the face until I wake up. And you wake up to that, <laughs> and you're like, what's going on? Either he needs to go potty, or he's about to throw up. But he does this thing where he just kind of goes <laughs> and if I hear that, I wake up so fast, get him off the bed and put him in the bathroom so he can, you know, do his business on the tile and easy to clean up. Just not on the bed, please. Anything but that. He's such a good dog. He's the best dog. And uh, they keep on lobbying to move back uh, the time before something goes public domain to keep all of their characters, such as Mickey Mouse. So now there's a ton of characters whose creators are dead, but they aren't old enough to be in public domain. That does kind of suck, Sheely. Although, I mean, Disney is so relevant. I don't know. I think they're... It's like a case for both. I mean, Disney is still doing really well with all of their properties. I kind of wish that they would still, you know, be able to keep them to themselves and not make it public domain. But, of course, there's a lot of, a lot of other licenses out there that probably should just, you know, become free for everybody. If nobody's doing anything with it, right? Nobody defies the mouse. And Disney's pockets are so deep, they can kind of do what they want. <laughs> They're kind of like their own country now, right? Yeah, my pet is not fat. He's just chunky. He's, he's very big boned, I guess we could say. 
So uh, the AI, so let's get back to this. It can create memories, have thoughts, and grow up. The process isn't different from how humans work. <laughs> if you were to raise your own AI that way, it would make perfect sense to refer to it as your alter ego. I see. <laughs> All right, we're moving to Disney. <laughs> I mean, if you live in a big section of Florida, you are basically in Disney. Everything around there is Disney related. Uh, a second perfect normal personality can never forget or grow old. That's what Chihiro created. Holy cow. Legend, speaking of showing the pups off. The PS Legend. Thank you so much for that sub, buddy. That is 11 months. And I uh, hope you saw your little gift on Discord. Let's see. Oh, yes, I did see that one, Legend. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to reply to that. I was running around when I saw that and I forgot to get back on there. That was really cool, but I need explanations. How does that actually work on Discord? I really haven't looked too terribly into those like server boosts. When you do that, you can get like certain kinds of uh, bonuses, right? As far as like, um, like space and like emotes and stuff like that. I know it does some kind of things to help out your Discord channel, but thank you so much for that, Legend. I really appreciate that, dude. And uh, Disney would be able to use Mickey Mouse to make a ton of money, even if he was public domain. They just do that with a lot of public domain characters already. I assume, Sheely, maybe the problem is they want to keep other people from using Disney characters and making money on it. Them having the copyright allows them to basically sue other people into oblivion if they try to use Mickey Mouse in their own movies and stuff. But if he became public domain, nothing would stop you creating a TV show with Mickey Mouse, right? Is that really what they're trying to stop? Oh, I appreciate that, Legend. Help uh, educate me. <laughs> well, have a good one, dude. Thank you again so much for the sub. You have an awesome weekend. Wait, did I win one of those? Why did... Oh, there was a bomb, Sheely. I gotta drop another one. I'm not supposed to get those tokens. They're for you guys. There you go. Okay, so that alternate personality is the alter ego. Kyoko, how do you know so much about this? Are you okay with this? Anyway, so he fixed the broken laptop and put his own program on there. Is that what that means? Yes. Then he brought the machine to the dressing room where the mastermind would not be able to see it. <laughs> hmm. But you know, all this master and whatnot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I believe I'm on fire. Oh, God. He's thinking of that master as something else, huh? <laughs> all right, DJ, that ain't good. And that's the thing. They do the same thing with all their princess movies. Mm, that's true. And some of those things like Cinderella, and, although is that true? Because like, like a lot of those stories existed before Disney and I see new versions of those characters that are not Disney, you know? Like I could have sworn there was like another Pinocchio movie released. It wasn't in America necessarily, but somebody made another Pinocchio story that was had nothing to do with Disney. So I think some of those licenses, they still can do their own thing, I believe. He just wants a very enthusiastic coding session, right? Sure. Hifumi's head's always in the gutter. I thought you were only into 2D. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yes, Krim, you get less lag on PC typically versus mobile. This is the most excellent 2D possible. Huh? But he's a guy and also a computer program. I feel as if... Oh, that aspect will be no problem. I mean... That aspect? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's talk to him a bit more. True, but other people can still, I mean, they, I guess what I'm saying, Sheely, is Disney can't lock down those characters, right? Like like a Cinderella or something. Um, maybe that's not the right one, but like Pinocchio. Pino, Pinocchio existed, I think, before Disney, or some of those ones did. Other people could still make movies based on those tales. They can make money on it, and Disney can make money on it. That's all fine and fair. But it's the ones that Disney created, like like Mickey Mouse. Those are the ones they really can't stop, I believe. <laughs> That's what it seems like, DJ. <laughs> so Kyoko typed away rhythmically. How much do you know about what's going on? Master. Master only gave me the general idea. Well. But I do know things that have become very grave. He found himself caught up in this without warning. Kyoko immediately shot out another question. Why are you here? That's right. Well. Are you asking what Master had planned for me? Well, he wanted me to analyze the massive number of files stored on this laptop. That's a good idea. Um, 
I believe the files are related to the school, but the protection them is surprisingly strong. So it's taken me a little longer than I thought. Master. But here's what Master must have been thinking. The fact that the files are protected so tightly means that they must contain some important secret. For example, perhaps the secret of this school. See, now we're getting somewhere. While I was busy struggling to make a sound, Kyoko pushed forward and asked her next question. How much longer until everything is unlocked? That's right. Um, it's gonna be a while. Leave it to me. But I'm definitely gonna do it, so you can just leave it to me. I see. So, because of how long it would take, he designed Alter Ego to handle the workload. <laughs> Smart. It also means that the work remains uninterrupted even after his death. Once again, Kyoto typed quickly. Kyoko. Kyoto. <laughs> so, and that's the thing, Shuli. They're taking advantage of the characters that went into public domain, and they're denying others the chance by stopping new characters from going public domain. I guess here's the, the, the question I have, Shealy. Um, the people that made, okay, they're, they're taking advantage of, let's say, Pinocchio. As, it might not be a good example, but let's say it was before Disney. If uh, they're taking advantage of it because nobody copyrighted it, um, did the people that originally created Pinocchio, could they have kept that copyright going? You know, it's like if, if, if somebody else was screwed out of keeping a copyright going because of these laws, that sucks. But if there's no evidence that somebody was even trying to keep a copyright going, because you got to fight for these things, then maybe it's like sucks to suck, I guess. I don't know. And Michael, we're still checking out the laptop right now that we found. We're actually talking to the AI, finding more about what's going on with the school. <laughs> Engage no witness protocol. They're all dead. Maybe it's all connected to um, Monokuma, too. I mean, he's like an AI, right? All right, keep it up, but be careful not to let the mastermind notice you. That's right. Don't worry, I've got a secret plan already, just in case. Now, that's true. Some of those were before any of these laws even existed, right? So it just it wouldn't even be possible. But then I guess the problem is Disney lives beyond Walt Disney. You know, it's such a huge company, it keeps going to try to fight for these copyrights where a lot of these other people that created these things it was just them once they die if the families don't care about it then it just kind of becomes free because nobody's fighting for the rights for these things whereas like I, I guess like Tolkien is the other case where yeah Tolkien's been long dead but the family keeps that thing going I guess kind of in a Disney sort of fashion once they start making so much money the families keep it going right <laughs> Actually, I can see what's going on using my built-in webcam, so if anyone suspicious shows up, I'll just scream for help real loud. It's a pretty basic plan, I have to say. Yes, indeed. That is fine during the day, but nighttime is a concern. Huh? Why? Are you okay with this? Have you forgotten? All our rooms are completely soundproof. Oh, we couldn't even hear the screaming. Once we close our doors, he can scream as loud as he wants, but we won't hear a thing. Is that true? The thing about like Walt Disney's brain? Don't they like have it frozen or something? <laughs> I, thought, I remember hearing something like that. I don't know if it was just like a rumor or like a joke or if that's really a thing. Okay then, how about once it's nighttime, we each take turns guarding the dressing rooms? However, there's a good chance the mastermind would notice us all going in and out of the dressing rooms like that. Then what can we do? So then, once nighttime comes, I'll leave the door to my room open. Then there's no way I can miss Alter Ego yelling. But that makes it dangerous for her though, right? And if you're an e-hitman, why not just take a shot on the suspicious guy? I'm not trying to get found guilty here since I can't exactly escape the scene. Very true, very true. I think she's putting herself in danger trying to keep her door open. But if you leave your door open all night, then it's true. there's a chance I may become a victim myself, I know. However, but I'm not as weak as you may think. I wouldn't go down without a fight, I assure you. So essentially right now, Michael, um, uh, Chihiro, being the best master programmer, actually programmed an AI that knows some of the stuff that Chihiro knows. And so this Chihiro AI in the laptop is trying to hack into the rest of the files, but it needs time to do that. So we're kind of trying to figure out a way to keep the laptop safe so nobody messes with it. And Sheila, you're saying that Pinocchio went into public domain before Disney changed the law, and Disney is now making it to where the characters can't go into public domain. 
character should be able to go to public domain after a long time. You find that to be a good thing, but Disney's doing the opposite of that, which is causing a lot of good characters to sit and rot. And that, that is a bummer. But, I mean, it's not even just Disney, isn't it? Kind of like everybody. Like, imagine, like, a game company. Like, like uh, Silent Hill, for example. Konami just redid the copyright on it. They're not making any games based on Silent Hill. They stopped making real games a long time ago. They're just kind of keeping other companies from using that property, you know? I don't know. I, I kind of feel like everybody's guilty, but maybe Disney's probably the most guilty because they've been doing it for so long. But that's just common practice now, right? There was an undeniable strength in her voice when she said that. Yeah, none of us are free of sin. It's all money. It's all about money. Absolutely. That confidence was somewhat similar to Byakuya's uh, tone, but at the same time, different. Yeah, it had an entirely different feel, for sure. Like someone who'd been dropped onto a battlefield versus someone who'd been born on the battlefield. <laughs> I was born into the darkness, molded by it. I felt like uh, that was the fundamental difference. I was pulled out of my thoughts by the voice suddenly emanating from the laptop. Would you mind if I asked a few questions? Um, I haven't seen Master for a while, but when you got here, I thought it was him, but is Master... Oh no, he doesn't know. Of course he wouldn't know, right? For a split second, Kyoko seemed to not know what to do, but she recovered just as fast and quickly began typing. Her answer was clear, concise, and direct. Here's a question. Why do we even have to type to it? If it's got a camera... Couldn't it just be like, you know, listening to us, seeing us, like interpreting our speech? Maybe Chihiro didn't get that far in the programming. And it's Disney that is lobbying to keep increasing the amount of times that you can renew the copyright. Oh, absolutely. Because they've been doing it the longest, right, Shilly? That makes sense. I doubt anyone's tried to keep any copyrights going as long as Disney. <laughs> yeah, DJ, right? I'll be fine. I'll murder anyone that comes after me. And it's just, uh, if it was just Disney characters that were affected by it, then fine. But now a lot of public domain is just in purgatory without anyone who can use it. Now, you're talking about characters that Disney kind of um, made movies on that were based before Disney? Because I think other people can still make stuff based on that. Now, of course, I can't use um, the uh, Pinocchio Disney version, like, you know, scene for scene or whatever, maybe the exact story. But if I go back to the source material, I can still make my own Pinocchio movie that's not licensed by Disney. Because I think I saw one come out not that long ago. <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I, I saw something about that. It's every once in a while I see like some weird movies based on what I think are Disney properties. But then I remember, oh, that's right. Disney doesn't actually own this. They have their own version, but other people can still make their own movies based on it. Okay, we're telling the AI, Chihiro is dead. Mondo killed him. Oh, that's sad. Okay, then. To be honest, I knew all along. So uh, characters that would have gone into public domain, but didn't because the time get, keeps getting pushed back. Okay, I see. I kind of see what you're talking about, I think. So I was prepared for this moment. <laughs> Somehow, like... I feel kind of sorry for her. Um... I can't even imagine how it must feel to lose your other self. <laughs> It is a simple computer program. It does not have feelings unless you program feelings into it, in which case it just becomes sadder. What? Are you sure about that? Shall we go? Anyway, that's enough for now. If we linger here too long, the mastermind will start to suspect something. And then Kyoko typed one last sentence. I'll come back later. Yes, please do. It's a promise, okay? Bye-bye. The AI seemed totally different from when we first arrived. He seemed upbeat. Was it just because he was following his programming, or could he have actually been worried about us? Could it be? Hmm. What's wrong, Hero? You know? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering if we might be able to get this laptop online. Then we could call for help from the outside. Hmm. We need Wi-Fi for that, right? <laughs> yes, prepare the Hitman program. But this is just a dressing room. Don't you think you could get online from, or I don't think you can get online from here. Well? Well, if we take it out of here and find somewhere that does have online access, but we don't want the cameras to see that. <laughs> That's way too dangerous. The mastermind would find out in no time. Uh, 
Um. Oh yeah, true. Indeed. Smuggling in a really big jacket. This is no time for taking needless risks. For now, I'll monitor the progress of the file analysis. I'm confident we'll uncover some kind of clue once it's finished. Hmm. This feels like a detour more than anything else, but I suppose it can't be helped. Of course. I'm scared Celeste is going to sabotage this, because Celeste doesn't even want to get out of here, right? <laughs> yeah, that'll never work. Come on, hero. And characters that came out after Mickey Mouse that the creators of um, that the creators of are dead and were claimed by someone that has the family by the company that made it. Let's see here. So you're talking about like somebody else that worked for Disney, but is not Walt Disney, but they've passed away, kind of thing. You know. So, uh, should we get going? It's true. Indeed. <laughs> Goodbye. We'll be back. I promise. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, copyright law is just a big mess, that's for sure. I suppose. Okay. But I get it. I also get it, though. That's just money. But it also seems at some point that has to give, right? And we all left the dressing room. And not for Disney specifically, but any character made by any non-huge company. So I guess that, oh, I see. So I guess Disney changing the laws, I see what you mean. It's also affecting it for other characters that have nothing to do with Disney and aren't even, I guess what it should be is that if you're actively fighting for it because you're actively using it, maybe you should be able to protect your copyrights. But if you don't do anything for it, it should be able to fall into public domain. As soon as we were in the uh, out in the hall, Hina let out a joyful shout. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? I ended up doing something totally awesome, right? As if he'd been waiting for his cue. Oh, great. <laughs> Hina has gained enough experience to level up. Wait, that's a thing here? What's the matter? So, what was his awesome, this awesome something? Monokuma. What the heck? You guys all seem in remarkably good spirits. Did something happen? No, nothing in particular. Shh, shut up about the laptop. <laughs> oh, keeping secrets? No fair. I demand an exclusive interview. <laughs> Denied, denied, super denied. What the heck? Yeah, just because you demand something doesn't mean we have to do it. Say what? <laughs> do it? You mean like, do it, do it? Huh? Wait, what? What do you mean, do it, do it? Oh no, we're getting bonk worthy again. Disgusting. Ew, gross. You said do it. Just the worst. What? You said it first. <laughs> We were just talking about going to the bathhouse. We have not had a chance to relax in some time. Nice save, Celeste. Thank you. Huh? <sighs> but unfortunately, the bathhouse is not divided into men and women sections. <laughs> so we decided to do rock, paper, scissors to decide which group would go first. Nina won the match for us, and that's why we are all so pleased. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Speaking of which... <laughs> Okay, boys, why don't you go ahead back to the dining hall or something? We're going to take a nice long bath. Hey, come on. Ah, oh, jeez, what are you going to do, right? We lost fair and square. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hinafumi jumps in. Well, actually, they said I can come as well. <laughs> like, no, they didn't. <sighs> well, ladies, shall we go? Celeste didn't hesitate coming up with a ruse, and her poker face didn't even flinch. That's right. She's like the master of poker, right? So she's perfect to lie. You can never trust her. So she and the other girls headed back to the dressing room. Oh, um... Damnation! Not then, damn it. We totally lost. Another day without getting my take at the very first bath here. Uh, um... Yeah, but tomorrow for sure. You'll definitely get that bath tomorrow. Okay, so should we head back to the dining hall now? Hey! Hold on. Hey! Hey! Something strange here. Very strange. Strange? What do you mean? <laughs> What's strange is, this is the perfect chance for you to sneak a peek. Oh, gosh. Come on, Monokuma. Get your head out of the gutter. <laughs> yeah, if Fumi would be sacrificed on the spot, there'd be no trial. It's like, we all did it. What are you going to do? <laughs> huh? <laughs> that, that's... Without a doubt. You're absolutely right. Oh, uh. gosh. Of course he would agree with that. I thought you were all about the 2D. <laughs> All you need, all of you need to shut up, sit down, and listen to what I have to say. 
An opportunity like this doesn't come along very often. It's the ideal setting of a man's fantasy. I was forced to ask myself, should I sneak into the bathhouse like Monokuma said, or just quietly go back to the dining hall? Hey, Wonder! How you doing, Wonder? Welcome. And unfortunately, one of Fumi's free time events is doing exactly that, right? Do it, John. We need the fan service scene. I was not going to do it. I was not going to do it, but I can put it to a vote. We could put it to a vote. Okay, let's go. Wait, I didn't say anything. With the man's fantasy brim burning in my chest, I decided to head back to the bathhouse. That I didn't even get to choose anything. It's uh -huh. just happening. <laughs> Have fun in your man's fantasy. <laughs> Have a smashing good time. And you didn't get this outcome when you played through? D did it give me a choice? I know, I know I've been jumping back and forth between chat and game, but I don't remember actually choosing yes or no for anything. None of us had the choice. I don't think we did. I'm doing so great, Wonder. I'm so happy. It is the weekend. I was chatting earlier, but I just got a promotion at my job, which is super exciting. And tonight, after the stream, I'm going to go meet up with some friends. We're going to do an escape room and grab some ramen. So this is a very, very wonderful weekend. How are you doing, Wonder? We opened the door to the dressing room, silent as death, and peeked inside. It looked like the girls had already finished changing and gone into the bathhouse. This had all started as a lie, but apparently they decided to go in for real. Making sure it was empty, we quietly made our way into the dressing room. The Forbidden Land. There's going to be a lot of deaths. I think all the men are going to die this chapter because the women have killed us. For good reason. So, they really are taking a bath. Is this what Celeste meant by lying convincingly? Hmm. Mr. Haka Hakakuri, please refrain from pointless whispering. We're deep in enemy territory here. <laughs> Just up in the bathhouse, and there awaits a great dazzling passion. You guys, seriously. <laughs> oh, thank you serious. so much, Wonder. And you're doing good? And you just started a new job as a PA and you're loving it so far. That's so awesome. I love hearing um, everybody in the community making these huge gains. Right on. Good job. And apparently you did the thing that triggers this, but you don't remember what it is. But sometimes the free time events and certain presents... Oh, so like things I did in previous chapters, Relentless, might have affected this, huh? So you must have done something with Hifumi that made the scene trigger. Whoopsie. <laughs> uh, be careful. We don't get us caught. If Ogre finds us, we'll be meeting up with Hades in no time. Wait, who's Ogre? Talking about Sa Sakura, who would kill us all? <laughs> Mr. Nagy, you're on point. All right, so what am I looking for here? Without a doubt. What are you doing, Mr. Nagy? There are no fantasies in there. <laughs> she did good work, John. Great job. If you need to calm down, try counting prime numbers. Okay, so am I supposed to go through this door? Are we peeking in here? I place my hand on the door leading into the bathhouse. This is it. Oh, really? It was... I just kind of said it thinking like, you know, ogre, like big, massive creature. Maybe they were saying Sakura because she is the largest of the group and would murder everybody. But no, it's actually like a Japanese term. I had no idea. That's cool. <laughs> Electric pickles? Mm, might have something to do with what we're about to do, Michael. I place my hand on the door leading into the bathhouse. I open it gently, inch by inch. I maneuvered my hand like a master craftsman to avoid making even the slightest sound. A little further, a little further, and then it's going to get kicked open, isn't it? On the other side of the thick rising steam, I saw... Oh, thank goodness they all have towels on. I was like, am I going to get banned right now? There's the fan service, guys. Ah, uh, it didn't go any further than that. We bounced. Good. I don't even think they noticed. Wow. Uh, I'm not sure how to put it, but... I always feel refreshed after a job well done. <laughs> A 3D body isn't so bad in its nude state, I suppose. Could it be? But still, I just can't believe it. Like, for serious? How about that? Ogre's a girl? What's so hard to believe? It's just muscle mass. Was this really okay? Well, 
I look too. I guess I'm going to have to say yes. <laughs> I wish I had a choice. <laughs> ah, the return of the PRBs. <laughs> Meanwhile, we heard a buzzing of busy voices growing louder. The girls finished their baths and joined us in the dining hall. You got it. Ah, what a nice bath. This is fine. Getting a chance to stretch out and relax after all this time was a true pleasure. Indeed. Indeed. Of course. Normally, after a long bath, I like to make myself a nice protein coffee, but... <laughs> Sorry, no time for that. I bet he's going to spoil that we looked, right? <laughs> yeah, just because you did it doesn't mean it's okay. I mean, it's kind of that adage about how, like, everybody is their own hero in their story. You watch a lot of movies and these bad guys, you just think they're evil. They don't think they're evil. Of course, they think whatever they're doing is justified. Sometimes a movie makes a, a, a villain more relatable, but in any case, the villain always thinks what they're doing is the right choice, you know? Sorry, no time for that. So in the end... That's what I figured. Huh? Actually... We were just seeing in the bath now, it was about time for you to get up to something. Because... After seeing how happy we were, an evil little monster like you would never let that last for long. Hmm. Exactly. The good villains don't think they're villains. 100%. You're all so terrible to me. My entire existence! <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> Everyone's so cold and mean. Even after I got presents for you all. Presents? Well now, well now, well hmm. now, well oh, now. Oh, have I got your attention? Then let's head to the gym where your presence awaits. See ya later! No questions, no dilly-dallying. Get a move on and everything will become clear. I'm scared what this present's gonna be. Oh, um... <laughs> when is it? What are you scheming this time? It would seem... He's probably gonna repeat the same thing again. Providing us with a motive to get things moving. Yeah, 100%. Oh, I missed the 15 feet in the air! What the heck? <laughs> huh? Again? I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. <sighs> Me either. I'm like totally traumatized. However... It's okay. We have Alter Ego. I'm sure he'll find something that'll help us. So for now... Correct. We have to endure it. Come what may. This isn't going to be good. Oh, she slipped and fell 15 feet in the air. <laughs> With heavy feet, we made our way to the gym. But when we arrived, there was already someone waiting for us. What? These two. Uh-oh. These two are like the most volatile in the group right now. To be kept waiting by the likes of you, rest assured, if we had access to firearms, you'd all be dead. Holy crap, dude. Calm down. Byakuya, did you get here early? <laughs> did you forget how to walk? Is that why you're late? It's simple. Right foot, left foot, right foot. <laughs> the same as always, I see. Her, on the other hand. What the heck? Oh, she's back to her Debbie down herself, huh? Hmm. I heard what sounded like a sneeze, and she was back to her old self. <laughs> so now she goes from maniac to depressive whenever she sneezes? Seems kind of late to add that into the mix. <laughs> what the heck? Why does everyone keep making fun of me? I hope you all win the lottery and get hit by a bus. Oh. Now I have to do this stuttering again. I forgot about that. <laughs> and Monokuma is so cute. You can't disappoint him. I do like Monokuma in a way until the evil happens. But otherwise, he's kind of funny and friendly, you know? So, when you want to say something mean, then you can talk, huh? Well. It looks like everyone's here. So then. Which means... It's time for the presents. Oh, it's movie time. Uh-oh. You guys? It looks like everyone's here. So, let's get started. What? Come on, out with it. What kind of motive have you prepared for us this time? However... Whatever you subject us to, we will not break. We've broken every time before. What makes you think this is going to be any different? Yeah, that's right. We're not going to lose to you ever again. Come on! You don't have to get so defensive. Calm down. I've decided to change things up a bit this time. Up until now, I've been using the whoosh of the north wind to get you all moving. 
but sometimes you gotta use the sun to light a fire under someone's butt. Without further ado, I give you... The interesting art style there. This! <gasps> Is that cash? Ten million dollars! Hey! <laughs> Everything's motivated by money, right? <laughs> I've prepared this graduation present for whichever lucky student makes it out of here alive. Okay, so we can... We can start to make some educated guesses. Who in this group is the most motivated by money or success? You know, you think Byakuya, but he comes from a rich family, so maybe ten million dollars isn't all that meaningful to them. You know, who would who would do the best by this money? What do you think? It's ten million bucks. Ten million smackaroos. It's like totally wow, wow, wow. Am I right? <laughs> that's the way he talks. So that's the motive you prepared, is it? Ten million dollars is... Yeah, see, I was thinking for him it'd be nothing. It's not nearly enough. It's true. When it comes to motives, money certainly is the gold standard, so to speak. Whether it's in a mystery novel or the real world. Hmm. But... What are you saying? There's no way we'd kill each other for money. Of course. She's right. You can't simply purchase a person's life. Uh, um... You can say ten million dollars or however much. I don't give a crap. For serious. Yeah, they're all right. Whether it's ten million or any other amount of money. No, not even just money. From now on, no matter what you do, we won't kill our friends. <laughs> Come on, stop trying to act tough. I can't wait! I most... can't wait! The most important thing is to live a pure and moral communal life. Monokuma disappeared, leaving his, leaving his words on stage along with a massive sum of money. Now it truly is turning into Squid Games, isn't it? Um, that was like, what, 47 million or something like that? There's nothing to worry about, right? Nobody would kill a friend for money, right? Hmm. Have you so quickly forgotten the lesson from the last time? You can't judge others by your own standard. <laughs> Yeah, there might be someone here who's having a m money problems. <laughs> Personally, I've earned over one million dollars from my gambling efforts. My life is comfortable. Uh, I'm telling you! Uh, Hifumi, how about you? You know nothing! I'm a super popular content creator. I don't have any problem making enough to buy my comics and DVDs. <laughs> then... Hey. Just stop. Pressing others about their personal finances is ugly. Uh, ugly? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't need the money. Blam! <laughs> and Relentless, you mean hero, to be honest? You're always broke, so it's not like you can say anything about it. That's true, Relentless. I forgot about how broke he's always been talking about, right? I think Jill's going to come and go, Michael, as we go. But don't worry. Either way... Whatever is going to happen will happen without warning. That is the nature of this game. Uh oh, is it nighttime already? That was quick. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night. Dang it. And we got to worry about um, Kyoko because she's going to leave her room open so she can listen for the laptop. And the doors to the dining hall will be locked. An entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah, didn't Hero buy that like extremely expensive item for like his job or something? <laughs> and it was like a waste of money. I forget what it was. Like something special. And say so they'd all overthink what happened, and uh, you get away with just on that basis. All 100%, DJ. Hey, Hasifa. What's up, dude? How you going? Good to see you. Happy Saturday. Hmm. It's that time already, huh? Hey. Before we separate, let me remind you. Starting tonight, I'll be leaving my room door open to make sure nothing happens to Alter Ego. But just because my door is open, don't assume that will make me an easy target. Because... Or the predator may suddenly find itself the prey. Her voice was calm and composed, but it was clear she meant what she said. You know? Okay, uh, let's everyone just head back to our rooms. How about that? And don't think about that whole money thing, got it? 
good. Then let's break. Hero's sounding a little sketchy now, isn't it? Hmm. And you, he mentioned the crystal ball. That's what it was. The crystal ball in the from the first chapter that got thrown to like turn on the, the fire. How was that? Pretty good, right, Taka? Hmm. He's doing his best Taka impression. Oh, is that a quote from the game, DJ? Uh, as soon as I was back in my room, I crawled into bed. Money. There's no way that's going to get anyone to kill anyone else. I told myself that, but deep in my heart, I was still troubled. After all, I thought the same thing last time about having our secrets revealed. Even if the reason for it seems completely nonsensical, a murder can still happen. That's the lesson we learned. Okay. When you put it between quotations, I wasn't sure if that was from something else. But this time, this time is different. I'm sure of it. Because of the program Chihiro left behind, Alter Ego, we finally have some small hope to grasp onto. As long as we have that, then I'm sure. Oh, here's our weird dream time. It's a baby! Little kids have it so easy, because they can put little in front of their name, and right off the bat, everyone thinks it's cute. <laughs> I was going to say, like, uh, like rappers when they put little in front of their name. They're just so cute, aren't they? Well, then fine. I want everyone to start calling me Little Mon Monokuma. See, just by adding that, my cuteness goes way up by like 10%, right? Yeah, the world doesn't need nearly enough Lils. More Lils would lead to the salvation of the world. Just imagine, little arsonist, little war criminal. <laughs> we know. I know of a little war criminal. Uh, little destruction of the environment. Little hit and run. Little death tax. Little great depression. Even the darkest subject can suddenly become brighter. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Yeah, little serial killer. Suddenly cute. And uh, young both motives sparked murders with scary certainty. So if we have a motive now, is somebody already at their limit? Now you have not only the previous things to worry about, but now you get cash if you do it, right? Our dreams are expanding, ding, ding! Yeah, just that dream alone knows that we don't believe our own lies. We know something's going to happen. Oh, I hope... Um, Kyoko is not dead. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another bee! Day. It's the same thing every time, but it's still, I don't know, funny to listen to. Well, I guess I should head to the dining hall. I would check on the laptop first, honestly. Oh, we should save it. We have not saved yet this entire stream. I always forget about saving. Yeah, an unfortunate bullet accident. Uh, uh, we haven't found any guns in this place, have we? I don't think there's a gun yet. Thank goodness. There we go. Everybody's already out here. Where's Kyoko's room? Kyoko's like way at the end, huh? That's Hifumi. Wait, did I miss it? Maybe she was on the other side. <laughs> That's true, DJ. Everybody would be dead, right? <laughs> she ran into a bullet six times. The same bullet? There she is. Everyone's meeting up at the dining hall. I should head there myself. Hey, Makoto. Hey, morning, Makoto. Good morning. You're kind of sweaty. Have you been exercising? That's right. Yep, me and Sakura were doing our morning workout. But I didn't break our nighttime promise. I just ran around my room till it ended. Why don't you come with us next time? I don't think I could keep up with you and Sa Sakura. Huh? Ah, uh, seriously? Uh. Okay, then we could do something in the rec room. I'm not good at much, but I do know how to play Othello. <laughs> I'm not very good at that either, though. I don't like uh, to think when I'm playing, so... All right, let's just go to the dining hall. Or can I check on the laptop real quick? Nope. Go to the dining hall, the game says. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I studied tactics. Could it be? So, the people here today are the same as yesterday, just us seven. Mm. Uh, Byakuya and Toko are a lost cause, but... Well... It looks, it looks like Taka's decided to stop coming for good, too. <sighs> it's like he's just given up. That's so sad. Poor Taka. <laughs> For people wound as tight as he is, when you snap, you snap hard. I wish there was some way to make him better. Mm. Just time. Just gonna take time to heal that wound. On another topic, Kyoko did everything go all right last night? Indeed. Yeah, I didn't have any problems. Correct. I went and checked on the laptop a little while ago, and there weren't any problems there either, but... Kyoko seemed to hesitate, but... <sighs> It's related to this case, so I suppose I should be blunt. Anyway... I have to make a new rule. Using alter ego without permission is prohibited. Someone is going in and out of the dressing room would draw unwanted attention from the mastermind. Oh! I would have thought that would be obvious. Why do we need to make a rule about it? Well... That's a good question. Hey. Do you have any thoughts on that, Hifumi? Oh. Um, no, just like you said, we all need to be very careful. See, he wants to go back there and flirt with the computer, right? And time is a decent doctor, but they keep being cited on my malpractice. I love that. Huh? Say what? Whatever. Let's just hurry up and eat. We don't have time to stand around flipping our lips. <gasps> I saw that, Hasifa. I saw that. Hold on, when we get to a good breaking point when I can save it, we'll check that out. What? What? Jeez. You're, uh, why are you talking like a pissed off drill sergeant all of a sudden? We ate breakfast in a rush, then headed back to our rooms. What should I do today? Hey, we got free time. This is the perfect time for me to check that out. So Hasifa, I didn't hear the noise goes off, but you just redeemed a game. Hold on. Let me see what the next stream game will be. Let me see here. This website. Check this out. It feels like just yesterday you redeemed a game, Hasifa. <laughs> How long has it been? Let's see here. Stream store, redemptions. What was it? Hey, it was the other one. Nice. I can't wait. That first one was really good. So, um, Asifa just redeemed uh, Seven Days a Skeptic, which we played seven. What was the first one called? Seven Days. Uh, seven Days. It wasn't Seven Days of Murder. Seven Days of something. I can't think of the name of it. Stranger. Five Days of Stranger. That was it. That was a really cool game. I loved the story and just how everything unfolded. That was a really cool adventure game. Nice job, Hasifa. You know, funny thing about that, Hasifa, I actually just watched a YouTube video from that uh, Yahtzee Croshaw guy. He was talking about, um, uh, what was it? Uh, adventure games and how different they are, kind of in relation to the new Monkey Island game that's going to be coming out. And he mentioned those games that he created back in the day. So it was kind of funny. No spoilers in anything. It was just like a very quick mention that he had made adventure games in the past. So I can't wait to try that one out, Hasifa. Good choice. Yeah. What about six days? You said he made three of them, right? Three of those games, I think. Okay. So we got free time. The first thing we're going to do is go to that slot machine and spend some of this money. Um, where was it? Six days is later on? Okay. <laughs> are they all the same main character or are some like totally unrelated to other games? Let's see. Where do we spend our money? I think the store is right over here. Yeah. <laughs> Six comes before seven. They do have different main characters sometimes. Oh, that's cool. Changing it up. All right, yes, we are going to try our hand against the almighty Mono Mono Machine. Now remember, the more money you spend, the better chance you have at getting a uh, unique item. So let's start out low. That's only a 10% chance of getting a repeat. Got an item that looks like, like instant noodles or something. 
Yeah, you want to keep spending a little bit more to keep that repeat chance low. Is that a... Is that a bong? <laughs> what was that? And um, in the second game, it's a Mono Mono Yashin. And you don't know why they changed the name? That's weird. That's really strange. And Hasifa, chronologically, it's five days of Stranger, seven days of Skeptic, Trilby's Note, and then six days of Sacrifice. And that's the last one. So out of that series, Hasifa, which is your favorite? Okay, now it's starting to get expensive. Do I need my tokens for anything besides this? I guess that might be a little bit of a spoiler, but... Is there any reason not to spend all my money right here, right now? Except for the fact that the more you do it, the worse your odds become. Ah, uh, see, we already had that. So I'll spend most of my tokens, I guess, until they it becomes too expensive. You know what? Let's do a few easy ones. What the hell is that? It looks like a little chair. I'm gonna play the odds a little bit. Not put too much money into it, just hoping I don't get repeats. Oh, it looks like luggage. I don't think we have that yet. And it's hard to say, Hasifa. Yahtzee was playing around with different playstyles for each game, and they all combined into one overarching storyline. Oh, that's really cool. Nice. Definitely going to have to go back and watch those streams before we jump into the new one. Yeah, it's going to have a nice variety of... Ah, oh, we already had that. It's going to get a nice variety of things. Um, so when you do give a present, you might have a good option. Scissors. <laughs> I know who that's going to. That's an easy one. Okay, let's do one more. For now, it's getting pretty expensive. Oh, perfume it looks like. So I'm probably going to give a present to my favorite character right now, uh, Kyoko. Let's find out where she is hiding. Looks like there's nobody on this floor. Let's see, where else could she be? Floor two? Nobody there? Everyone's on floor three, it looks like. There she is. Okay, she's in the physics lab. All right. Off we go. And that's really interesting, Hasifa, that he tries to change up the play style each time. I like that. Oh yeah, since we're kind of in the middle of this, Hasifa, we'll probably just play it right after this. So if I had to guess at the rate we're going, maybe in another four or five streams, probably. I did this before. <laughs> I totally missed these stairs around this corner. There we go. But of course, before I ever play a game somebody redeems, um, I always will message you privately and make sure we schedule it at a time you can join. So in case like the next stream where you'd be able to join doesn't work out, then I usually just find something to play like a one-off or something small until you can join. Okay, so he should be right over here. And the amazing Rapscallion, what a cool name. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Okay, should be right in here. Let's see. Oh, maybe she's in the back room. I thought she would have been right, right there. No? Hold on, did, did I have my wires crossed? Where are you? It looks like she's in the physics lab. Hmm, let me try that again. And hello, how are you doing, Rapscallion? Have you uh, played through these games before? This is my first time. Okay, maybe she's like off to the side or something. Oh, look at that! What a good hiding place. She's the master of hide and seek. Whew. I have to put all my energy into watching out for myself. I don't have time to worry about anyone else. 
Hmm, should I talk to her for a while? Yeah, she's she's having a hard time. She's she's taking a lot of pressure handling that laptop too. Correct. You want to spend time with me? However. But I don't have anything to say. Are you okay with that? I spent some time with Kyoko and Sounds. I think we did that one time before. All right, we grew a little closer, and yes, we're going to give her a present. What would she want? We got a Coke, Sonic cup of noodles, like Sonic the Hedgehog. And yes, um, Rapscallion, yeah, I, I post all of these on YouTube. The VODs are also in the um, the channel as well on Twitch, but if you prefer to watch them on YouTube, I am currently doing all the Death Note streams. What I try to do is when I have time, I upload like a big bunch of them, and then set them up and schedule them. So usually like one comes out every day or two. But yeah, these will definitely get on there. But if you want to catch up right away, the quickest way would be on um, uh, on Twitch. And speaking of which, Rapscallion, did you find me through YouTube? That's awesome. Uh, no, I don't want to give her that. I'm not sure what she'd be interested in, to be honest. Perfume? Very popular with men these days, but to be honest, although it does attract the ladies, most guys hate the smell. Oh god, is that like Axe Body Spray? And g -Sick is a terrible, terrible watch. What is this? Our scarf belonging to a certain masked hero. It's tattered and worn due to countless battles it's been through. That probably is going to go to the uh, uh, Hifumi. Bunny Earmuffs. One of the most popular items from Gothic Lolita. That's going to... Uh, oh, what's her name? Layering Shears? We know who that's going to. Quality Chinchilla Cover. A dark red seat cover. Its refined design is intended for only the most elite clientele. Maybe that. Maybe that. <laughs> DJ, that sounds like tactics. Um, and you had to patch your little sister up real quick because she got a splinter in her toe. Oh no, Sheely, that sucks. I hate splinters. Um, there was a lot of struggling when you try to pull it out. So you use the good old trick of where you count down and pull it onto. Nice. Y you lose trust that way, but it works. A tumbleweed. A dried out plant seen in many Western films. If they pile up around your yard, just toss them off a cliff or something. Like people have a cliff. And Rep Scallion, you actually did find me through Twitch. Uh, you surfed for someone playing Danganronpa. Oh, that's awesome. Right on. Very cool. Yeah, this game's really cool. I'd, I'd heard of the series, but never tried it before. Then there's Berserker Armor. Hmm. I feel like that's going to go to either Hifumi or Sakura. And the Fastball Crystal Skull. A skull car from pure rock crystal. Some think skulls like this were created hundreds of years ago. Perhaps with alien intervention. I feel like that is going to... Um, hero. A moon rock. A rock taken from the Sea of Tranquility on the moon of the astronauts in Apollo 11. Its composition is apparently unusual for where it was found. Maybe that. Maybe that. Oh, I really appreciate that, Rapscallion. Very kind words. Thank you, dude. Secrets of the Amoplata. That is the jujitsu book. That might actually be a good present for her. She was saying that she is, like, pretty formative for, like, fighting. Actually, that might be a really good one. Maiden's Handbag. Available only at the Posh Maiden Road, which is geared towards female fanfic fans. Please, please take me with you the next time you go. A water flute? <laughs> Here, I thought that was a bomb. Uh, a unique type of flute. You pour water into the base and blow from the top, which can create a variety of sounds similar to a chirping bird. That's kind of cool. Ancient tour tickets. A man's fantasy. School crest. A spare bat. Crazy diamond. What is this? Oh, proof that you cleared chapter two. Okay. Those we can't give away. We have to keep those. And she freaked out after she saw that it started bleeding, even though it was just a drop or two, and you had to carry it back inside to clean. Oh, poor, poor little, um, your poor little sister. That sucks. Yeah, I, I've gotten some nasty splinters before. The nice thing about splinters, though, is generally, even if you can't get it out, your body will reject it. Sometimes it has a hard time, but usually your body can just push it out on its own. I think I'm going to go for this Secrets of the Amoplata. I don't know if it's... Oh, wait. I don't have any. I already gave it away. Dang it. I didn't notice the number. 
wasn't paying enough attention. Um, let's try the water flute. Why not? Something different. Oh, that might be it. Relentless. That would make sense. That makes total sense. So... This is something you don't see too often. Do you mind if I keep it? I'd like to take a closer look at it. Ooh, I think we gave her a good present. Does that mean she liked it? Nice. Okay, we might have time to go talk with one more person. Yep, we still got some time. Uh-oh, someone's ringing our doorbell. Who's there? What the hell? I thought he was still a zombie. Taka? Is it true? Can I really see Chihiro? Oh, you mean Alter Ego? He's still alive? No, not quite. Hmm. Let me see. I, I want to talk to him. Taka. The way he is now, there's no way I can explain what's going on to him. Kyoko said we're not allowed to use Alter Ego. But even so, I can't just leave him here like this. Okay, why don't we get going? We should tell Kyoko what we're doing, of course. Uh, uh. I can see Chihiro? Take me. And you actually have water flutes, Krem? And they make a pretty and loud sound. Oh, that's really cool. I've never seen one, I don't think. I'll have to check out a YouTube video, see what they sound like. Okay, let's tell Just her. Just a second. Where are you going? Huh? Hey. It's probably breast if you... Did I just say what I thought I said? It's probably best if you don't drag him around with you too much, giving his current condition. Kyoko looked at Taka, standing behind me. Yeah, I know that. But I was kind of getting hungry. I thought we could head to the dining hall or warehouse or something. <laughs> That's what I thought I said. Just total slip of the tongue. Whoops. Wasn't sure if anybody caught that. Correct. Well then, I guess that's okay. Don't lie to her. Tell her, tell her what you're doing. It's going to be good for Taka, right? I thought I saw a brief flicker of doubt, but maybe it was just my imagination. <laughs> yeah, those plot-relevant breasts. Let's see if I can take him to the dining hall. I wanted to show Taka alter ego. I should head to the dressing room as soon as possible. Nope. You have to go here. And Sheely. It was a tiny one. Um, it was just her second ever splinter. This first one didn't bleed at all, so it freaked her out. Yeah, some of them get in there, and when you pull it out, it just does some more damage and causes bleeding. <laughs> it's probably breast that way. <laughs> like, wait a second. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So there's a laptop inside the locker, understand? And the laptop, on, on the laptop, there's a program called Alter Ego. Uh, uh. How do I talk to him? Oh, um, well, you just tell me what you want to say, and I'll type it in for you. <laughs> That's just one for the quote books. I don't even remember what the rest of that statement said, but it did make sense, using that word in there. Do you hate Mondo? And since I couldn't stop him, do you hate me? It was clear he was forcing himself to get the words out. From his mouth, from the bottom of his heart, he forced his weakened voice to make the sounds. Hmm. Please. Okay. I typed the questions exactly as Taka had asked them. And then... So, um... Do you hold yourself responsible? But... If Master could talk now, I think this is what he would say. Please, live your life for the both of us. It's impossible for me now, but you can still survive and escape, all of you. Hey, Taka. I was about to say more, but quickly closed my mouth. Hey. The one asking these questions is Taka, right? Yeah, because I guess they can't use the camera to really see who's who, or maybe he just didn't have Taka programmed in there. Oh, I think you can see, actually. Analyzing all available data, that's the only conclusion I can come to. Um. Master told me how close Taka and Mondo had become. So that must be why he feels responsible. The screen suddenly went dark. And what happened next was... Stop fucking around! Oh, we have a Mondo alter ego! You're not letting yourself get crushed under the weight of responsibility, are you? Oh no. Yo. 
A man's only worth as much as the load he can carry. You get it, right, bro? Hell, what am I saying? Of course you do. Hmm. That's... So... I'm sorry if I startled you. That was my attempt at a simulation, using the data about Mondo that Ma Master had given me. Dude, this AI can be totally manipulative. You gotta watch out for it. I figured if Taka was depressed, that's the kind of thing Mondo would have said to him. Yo. So you're just gonna stand there, huh? Just wait for things to get better? God, this is like deep fake taken to the next level, right? Just take your time and get all depressed. Take the time and to in indulge your regrets. You might even start walking again without realizing it. <laughs> Thank you for that list. Nice. <laughs> and you know what we're gonna what's gonna happen is we're gonna see some character with vast tracts of land, so to speak, and that quote's gonna come up. <laughs> it's gonna be perfect. Sure, that kind of mediocre thinking might work for some people. <laughs> now back to the killing. <laughs> what if I said it with that kind of condescending tone? Uh, uh, Taka? Uh, uh, Whoa, what the hell's going on? He's getting his abilities back. It's starting to sink in. The way a bucket full of water sinks to the bone dry sponge. Huh? Those words, deep within my heart, they're inside of me. He's going Super Saiyan. Taka? His hair just turned white? Who the fudge is Taka? Your eyes. Hey, don't you worry about it. I guess I caused kind of a scene, huh? Shoot, man. And your voice. I'm a new me. I totally stuffed with fighting spirit now, you dumb butt. Okay, Taka, just calm down. What? I am calm, and don't call me Taka. That's not my name anymore. It's me. I am me. Am I supposed to call you me? That's very confusing. Taka let out a bone-chilling howl, then ran out of the room. Hey, Taka, hold on. And I took off after him. But someone stood in my way. Oh, Kyoko's going to punish us. Yep. As if tagging Taka out, she walked in briskly into the dressing room. Just a second. What do you think you're doing? Kyoko! Um, no, um, see, this is just... Don't talk about breasts. Enough already. Don't go around doing whatever you feel like. It causes problems. And not just for me, for everyone. He totally went Super Saiyan, right? <laughs> Don't let him power up, he'll destroy us all. Correct. Sorry. If you're really sorry, you'll get out of here, now. Okay. And we got scolded. Finally, I headed back to my room, embarrassed and sullen. We knew that wasn't the right thing to do. I mean, it's helping Taka, but like, bring um, Kyoko into it, you know? She's taking care of this laptop. But still, what was with Taka's sudden freakout? I'm seriously worried about him. Oh crap, it's nighttime. <laughs> this is breast for everyone. I mean, wait, what? Hmm. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> those quotes. And what's funny is like the characters with the, with the largest breasts, didn't she? She was like the first to die or one of the first to die. It was um, Junko, right? If I remember correctly, she was kind of the the heavy top character, and boom, she was gone like almost immediately. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Wait a second, something doesn't make sense to me. Maybe it's not in the dining hall, but didn't. Um, Hina say that she wanted to go out and get donuts for food? How? If the dining hall was locked up at night? I know they're not supposed to wander around at night or go to sleep anywhere else, but if the dining hall was locked, how would she even be able to get donuts? It seems like she wasn't really going anywhere at that point. 
Um, but maybe there's like the storage room has food as well. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> PRVs, bam. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. It's nighttime already. I guess I'll have to wait until tomorrow to figure out Taka's whole thing. Hey, Nate, you made it, buddy. How you doing, dude? Happy Saturday. How is your weekend going? For now, time to sleep. <laughs> Except for Nate. He just got here. <laughs> oh, theater time. Time for a weird dream. This one's going to be about Taka freaking out, isn't it? You want to know why I hate video games? You might not believe this, but I had a best friend once. Actually, he was my only friend, but unlike me, he had lots of friends. So me and him were at his house one day when a big group of guys showed up to hang out. They just bought the latest big budget video game. They sat there lost in the game, passing the controller back and forth for hours. But not me. I just sat there watching. That's right, I just watched. What's wrong with that? I didn't care. By just watching, I was able to nail down all the best strategies, even though I never actually played it. And I don't plan on ever playing it in the future either. <laughs> Wait, you learned all the strategies and you're never going to play it? <laughs> Can't you tell my hate for video games, Grim? <laughs> it's obvious, right? Oh, you have cold brew, Nate. That sounds so good. And you've been working on some cross stitching today. What kind of cross stitching are you doing? What kind of project? That's really cool. <laughs> Love that, Nate. Hmm. Sounds normal then. Pretty normal. And it all stemmed from a slip of the tongue. I was trying to say best and said breast. Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Ah, touche, relentless. Touche. Let's see. Oh, you're doing Pokemon pixel art. I've seen those like sets you can buy where it gives you a pattern to like do pixel art. That cross stitching is like perfect pixel art, isn't it? And you're finishing one up for uh, the Freddy and Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. How do you like that game? That's the first person one, right? Where um, I guess they're all first person, but like the 3D free roaming game. Are you liking that game? Just trying to cover up my true identity <laughs> by willingly going online and streaming games for everybody. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> You like it, but it's horribly buggy. Oh, that's a bummer. That sucks. I mean, honestly, like in Elden Ring, I'm loving that game completely. I run into problems all the time, mostly multiplayer problems. Like I connect with my wife and we get disconnected or it might crash when we're trying to play together. Crap like that. And the second one is the biggest one you've ever done so far. So it's been weeks in the works. Oh, that's cool. But how large is it? Like physically. Get ready to greet another bee. Day. Most of the cross stitch things I've seen are like real small. <laughs> oh, that is a bummer. Although there might be some weird setting you can change to fix that, Nate. Sometimes it's like your monitor refresh rate. Like I've had some games. What was it? Firewatch. I tried to play Firewatch one time. And of course, my computer way, way, way exceeds the requirements. But it ran like absolute crap. And I had no idea what the problem was. I did some research and it turns out I had to turn off G-Sync. It like was not compatible with G-Sync at all. It caused the game to run at like 15 frames a second. And I had no idea, but I turned that off, ran silky smooth. It was so weird. All right, we need to hurry up and get to the dining hall. I need to tell everyone what happened with Taka yesterday. 100%. Oh, that's a bummer. Thank you, Relentless. <laughs> and um, almost everybody has some problems with that game. Well, at least it's not just you, Nate. It's not a my computer problem. It's just like, fix the dang game, right? And you can run almost all games at 1440p close to max settings. I know, it's so silly when like, a game that you should be able to run just doesn't even work. But hopefully it doesn't crash or anything. If it just runs poorly, that's annoying. But if like you lose progress or it, it breaks you to know? the point you can't continue, that's no bueno. Yo, I've been waiting. Huh? Are you the only one here? Where's everyone? Hmm. Well, they went on ahead. Went on ahead to where? Hey, come on. We could talk about it later. For now, let's go take a bath. I'm scared that people are dead and you want to go take a bath? Bath? 
<laughs> Is this the right time for a bath? It did crash once, and, and there's lots of game-breaking bugs. Okay, so that's a big problem. Like, that kind of issues with the games, Nate, makes me just not want to even play it. That's a bummer. Someone help! Nifumi, hey, what's going on? <coughs> Makoto, save me. I've never asked you for anything, but I'm asking now. What happened? <laughs> She's trying to kill me. I'm guessing that somebody caught him peeking in the bathroom. Ifumi pointed at. Huh? Kyoko's trying to kill you? <laughs> it's literal Stockholm Syndrome. I love it. Oh, that sucks. Kyoko, what's going on? I never said I was going to kill him. I simply asked him a question. I'd like to know why he made the same mistake twice. Was that going to the laptop and trying to, you know, flirt with the AI? The same mistake? What did he do? So... Oh, no, it's this. Um... Oh, yeah, it was the dressing room. Okay, I was thinking, like, this bathroom. Uh, he snuck into the dressing room in the middle of the night and accessed Alter Ego without permission. And when I caught him last night... He was hugging the laptop and breathing strangely. Sounds like Hifumi. Huh? What are you doing? Woo. I thought I made myself clear yesterday, but since being subtle didn't work. Listen to me. I suppose I have to clarify myself or clarify myself further. No! <laughs> Please don't kill me. Wrong. I'm not going to kill you, merely instruct you. How very sad. I'm just going to chop off your legs so you can no longer wander in there. <laughs> That'll work. Let's see, Nate, they had a giant patch in February and it wasn't fixed like some. Um, it's frustrating but funny at the same time. You know, honestly, Nate, it's probably more fun to stream those bugs than it would be to do by yourself. Like at least everybody's experiencing your problems so everybody can relate. When you're playing by yourself and you run into problems like that, oh, you just have nothing to do but quietly rage by yourself, right? <laughs> Relentless. Imagine flirting with something that's not real. Couldn't be me. And you and Nate are going to play Monster Cap after this and romance some monsters. Giggity giggity goo. <laughs> he just can't resist that 2D Chihiro. And Lego Star Wars was running at 15 frames for you, Sheely. And you have a 3050 and Lego is beating my computer. Hopefully there's some settings that can do that. Like, like I had that problem with Firewatch. Just some setting I changed on my computer fixed everything. I guess we're kind of questioning everybody at this point. <laughs> you know, it comes out of big sex. <laughs> oh my goodness, that game. Um, Hifumi, you, could you tell me what happened? Well, well, I was, I was just talking. However, which was prohibited, was it not? <laughs> I mean, you see, talking to her was just so much fun, and I. Uh, um. Okay, okay, time out. I can't even believe I'm about to ask this, but Hifumi, you're not gonna tell us you fell in love or something, are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I, the cold-blooded killing machine of the underworld, would ever fall in love? That's... Well, Wait, it would no way. seem... Is this love? According to the spirits... I happened to do a psychic reading for a certain famous CEO once, and the guy was seriously head over heels for a mannequin. He had a wedding and everything. A mannequin? <laughs> Have you guys ever seen that movie? I think it's called Mannequin. It's like an 80s movie, but it's kind of a love story. It's weird. How about that? And your eyes just now. I saw the same look in his eyes. You know nothing! Shut up. She's not a mannequin, she's an angel. I feel as if... And don't bother telling me angels exist. What we have can't be defied by your petty words. Ah. Oh. Yeah, you're totally in love. That's funny. I don't know. To me, mannequins are not attractive. They're creepy more than anything. But I've also seen enough horror movies and games with mannequins that make it creepier. And you have it at minimum settings, tried every fix online, and gave in and just refunded it. Oh, that's a bummer, Sheely. But at least that's one nice thing about a lot of these services is they do give you that ability to refund, which is nice. 
And you mean to keep watching it? I, I hardly remember anything about it, Nate. I saw it way back when, when I was a kid. I just remember it being weird, <laughs> very weird. <sighs> so how did things end up like this? <laughs> yeah, they are probably good listeners, even if they have no ears. Well, at the beginning, I just wanted to hear her say master one more time. But then I was poking around at her settings and stuff, and I saw she was a well-designed program. And it was like, how can I say, it was the first time I, I was ever able to talk to, uh, talk live like that with a normal girl. Normal girl? Not normal. Not a girl, Hifumi. Come on. You know, I wonder... If sometime in my lifetime we will get to the point where there's an AI that, you know, essentially is relatable, you can have a conversation with it, you can have a relationship with an AI at some point. I don't know. I, probably not. Probably not. But in like 100 years, 200 years, it's going to get there. I'm not sure in my lifetime. though. Uh, but she's definitely not a normal girl. But... Even when all we did was talk about my hobbies and stuff, she wasn't annoyed or disgusted or anything. You just gotta find the right audience, Hifumi. That's all. Your stories are so interesting, Hifumi. Come on, tell me more. I wanna learn everything you have to teach me. And then I can pretend to be you and no one will know the difference because I've learned everything about you. I can take over your I life. I suppose. That's the first time a girl's ever said anything like that to me. Besides my mom, I mean. Has Hifumi still not gotten the memo that it's not a girl? Hey. Your mom says stuff like that to you? That's kind of amazing all by itself. <laughs> That's it's why I was like... just so happy. It was so much fun. Yeah, an emotional support AI, right? And before I knew it, I find myself, you know, liking her. Her face, her personality, her voice, even her keyboard. Well... Oh god, do we need to clean that keyboard? And Nate, depends on the AI. If it has a favorite Pokemon, maybe. <laughs> it's like, you, you ask the AI, what's your favorite Pokemon? And if it doesn't match up with yours, delete. Reinstall. Let's try this again. <sighs> I think you have misunderstood the situation, Hifumi. Are you okay with this? Alter Ego was not interested in who you were. It was interested in what you knew. It was an artificial intelligence. It exists to learn. Of course it wanted to hear things it did not know. You are an expert in many things Chihiro could not have been taught about for what it was worth. Honestly. Alter Ego wants that information. That is all. I know that. I know. I mean, I do know that. But still, are you saying it's totally hopeless or... You gotta be freaking kidding me. F you. Hold on. Did Taka just become, like, infused with Mondo? Because it seems like Taka is now part Mondo. Or do you guys get that as well? <laughs> Weebatome. I would not be surprised if that doesn't already exist, honestly. You know, one of my favorite sort of more recent creepy AI movies, it's called Ex Machina. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's about this guy that he's kind of like a, you know, master programmer. He's reclusive in the woods and he creates this AI and he wants somebody who works at his company to come to this like remote location and learn about it, test it out. They call it the Turing test where you interact with the computer and try to tell if you know it's an AI or not. Because the AI is supposed to be so convincing you think it's a human being. And it gets really weird, really creepy. It's a good one. It's a good one. I liked it a lot. <laughs> I haven't, I've only seen it once, but it's one I definitely want to watch again. Yeah, totally Super Saiyan. Hmm, this keyboard's a little sticky. <laughs> Might need to, somebody must have spilled some soda. And the important thing about this AI for Hifumi is that it's 2D. That's all that he wants, right, Katamari? And is that really what happened, Relentless? Oh my goodness. Hey, you jerks. I'm sitting here listening to you jibber jabber about whatever. Yo! Oh, Taka, are you back? <laughs> Who the hell's Taka? Huh? Um, you? <laughs> Listen up! I'm me, got it? What the heck? Huh? You're who? What? Don't bullcrap me, isn't it obvious? I'm Kiyotaka and Mondo. 
<laughs> I thought I called it. So like, Kiondo, Ke I guess. I'm gonna stick a banana up your tailpipe. What the? What the heck kind of fusion is this? Uh, what's happened to you, Taka? Actually, I told everyone what had happened the day before. Well then. So, because of what Alter Ego said to him. Um... Are you sure it's Alter Ego's fault? Maybe Mondo's ghost showed up and possessed him. Oh, now we're going back to ghosts. <laughs> Is that you, John? The master programmer in the woods making some AIs? I, I did take AI classes at uh, in college. They were really fun. Um, the AI class I had done, somebody had created a project in the past just for graphics, where it was basically a recreation of the original Legend of Zelda, and you could control Link around the screen with commands. So what our AI was intended to do is we had to basically program pathfinding. So like when you play a game and you have a character here and you click to send him here, but there's like obstacles in the way, pathfinding is what determines how efficiently the, the, uh, the computer can get to that spot, you know, get around corners, get around walls, all that. So our job was to come up with the most efficient pathfinding method. And it was super fun. And uh, essentially what you do in Pathfinding, how a game handles it, is it moves the character around the screen without you seeing it in a lot of different ways. And it tries to find the quickest way there. Once it has determined the quickest way to the goal, then it sends those um, uh, all those directions, like up, down, left, right, in reverse, back to the bot. And it goes in those directions. So it goes down the right path. Of course, you go back and you look at games from a long time ago when pathfinding was really bad and they didn't do a good job of that. Oftentimes characters would get stuck in walls and stuff like that. It was terrible. And you love the theory behind AI, but you cannot for the life of me comprehend the technical side of it. It gets wild. I mean, AI like this is, I, I think it's going to be just a really, really complex version of, um, like decision choices, you know, if this, then that, if this, then that, but it's real complicated. And there was a really cool simulation of how pathfinding and gaming works. I know it's so neat. And it's really uh, fascinating to hear how all this works. Oh no, we're talking about ghosts again. That's right. Ghost? No, there's no such thing. What are you all whining about? Come on. What? God, you're really cheesing me off. Is he going to start dropping F-bombs now? Hey, Hifumi. Yes? Yeah. I don't know what you're thinking, but... F you. Bro belongs to me. Huh? Yeah, he's saying that... Although he doesn't say the F word, he says F you now. Huh? Yeah. Alter Ego. He's an exact copy of the one who gave me my soul back. <laughs> I'm not going to let anyone else have him ever again. Fudge an idiot. I love how he, he censors himself. He's not quite Mondo, but a little bit Mondo. And the cool horrifying thing is that we're already getting pretty close to AI. I mean, a few years ago, Google had that demo of the assistant calling a salon and booking an appointment. I know, it's wild, isn't it? You know what kind of scares me, and I have no idea where we're at in this technology, is uh, people like, um, you know, like the Elon Musks and Gabe um, Newell from like Valve. Gabe has talked a lot about human computer interfaces. Is it eight HCI or something like that? I forget what they call it. But it's, it's essentially installing a chip in your brain and being able to do computational computer stuff with just your mind. But they talk about it like they're actively testing it and it's working. And I've never seen anything like working like that, but that's kind of frightening. That's getting into, um, what do you call it? Kind of a um, cyberpunk sort of stuff. It's like, are we really that close to that? I had no idea. It seems like it's like a hundred years off at least. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I can't follow that. What? So it would seem. I can't withdraw. Mr. Ishimaru, since I have this opportunity, let me say this right now. That's it. I'm sure of it. Destiny has bound me and her together in Gordian Knot of True Love. <laughs> well, me and him have been melded together in white hot heat of friendship. Hey, come on, you guys. Quit fighting over the computer. <laughs> Moron. Talk down to me and I'll ram this fist right into all four of your pivotal points. Completely well, I punch at the speed of sound and I don't have any arm hair, so there's no drag. Enough already. Knock it off, both of you. Hey. This doesn't belong to any one person. Chihiro left him to all of us. 
We can use him to finally gain access to vital clues. Mm. Kyogo's right. If anyone dares disturb our peace any further, hey. they'll have to deal with me. Okay, now there's a good threat. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the power of gun. And there's very minimal tests about it. That's kind of what I hoped. You know, it's like, oh gosh, I don't want to see us installing chips in our brain right away. It seems terrifying. But really curious to see where it goes in the future. It's both amazingly exciting and absolutely terrifying, especially when you think of computers getting hacked and stuff. What if you had a chip in your brain that went bad or got hacked? What kind of damage could that cause? And Katamari, you already got your microchip from your vaccine. <laughs> My 5G reception is so much better now. <laughs> what? Anyway. Although I have heard arguments in a way, we're already cyborgs. We carry one of these around with us everywhere. And you got to imagine in the past, my knowledge of, let's say, how to fix a refrigerator was based on what I learned from books and things. It was all up here. Now, if I have to like do some maintenance on my refrigerator, I can instantly look up anything. I got like the whole world at my fingertips. So in a way, we're already kind of cyborgs relying on another device for navigation, for looking information up, you know? It's like we're always jacked in kind of thing. It's not that different than if we got a microchip installed and did it quicker that way, you know? It's kind of wild to think about it that way. Yeah, you have a cell phone, a Fitbit, and a laptop for more heavy-duty tasks. We're all so technologically, or technologically bound now. It's crazy. <laughs> and I have a robot that goes around mapping my house as it vacuums. I love that thing. It's great. <laughs> we already know you're an Android, John. You don't need a phone. Have I made myself clear? So? I can't hear you. I... Yes. Yeah. Got it. I love Sakura putting the, her foot down. So then. Okay, then. Let's get out of here. We can't afford to linger too long. Hey. Are you sure it's okay to let them off with a warning? Indeed. Yes, I have a plan. It'll be fine. We're going to put a password on the laptop. <laughs> oh, that's true, Nate. I like that. The law of robotics says I should not be able to kill people so often. Not an Android, guys. Come on. And Hasifa, there were some scientific tests with people who were paraplegics that when installed with an interface could control a common tablet program like email and browsing and such. See, that is amazing. I love that kind of accessibility. That is great. Uh, after watching Hifumi and Taka leave dejected, we all went back to our rooms. <laughs> I'd like to let Sakura put the smack down once in a while. Is Monokuma an android, Michael? In which case, why not both? It's still morning, but because of everything that's happened, I'm tired already. Well, anyway, I just have to pull myself together. So what should I do with the rest of my day? Hey, more free time. I am going to keep pressing start to save it. It's under the X menu. Let's go ahead and do another save. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's bonk. That's a bonk, Relentless. Okay, so who should we spend time with today? We just spent time with um, Kyoko. Maybe Sakura. I don't think we ever spent time with Sakura. Sakura's... Also one of my favorites, for sure. Where are you hiding? Aha! In the physics lab. Of course, you have to be at the furthest possible place, right? Oh wait, can I just teleport there? Hold on, I think there's some places you can just, like, teleport to. You can! Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> hey, you guys are making it weird, not me. <laughs> Relentless, you're like, I'm normalizing this. <laughs> and she's with Hina, of course. And look at this. Um, Kyoko's still in her little hiding spot. Okay, they're probably back here. What's funny is, I mean, we joke about that kind of death, but when you think about your final moments, death, there's worse ways to go, for sure. If you gotta die anyway, might as well go out happy.
Hmm, they don't seem to be here at all. Maybe they're like right outside the door? I don't know. Where are you, Sakura? Let's check the map again. This is the right floor, right? Oh, it looks like it's like right in this corner. But that's actually in this room. But I think it could be anywhere. They don't do a good job of putting those like little labels exactly where they're standing. Could be way over here. There she is. This is bad. I don't like this atmosphere. Hmm, should I talk to Sakura for a while? Yes. I see. Are you saying you're ready for another lesson? Very well. Prepare yourself and come with me. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Sakura put me through a tough but rewarding training session. I can feel myself getting stronger. We should do that every day. <laughs> Working out's good for you. Would you like to give Sakura a present? Of course. I think we have some presents that Sakura would really like. Okay, so my guess is that she would like the fresh bindings, uh, strips of cotton cloth. They were once commonly used for underwear and bandages. They say when you wrap it around yourself, both body and soul become taut. Although I think of that as like you bandage yourself to train. Oftentimes if you're doing a lot of kicks or punches, you put bandages around your wrist and ankles. Um, the other thing she might like is this berserker armor. Bastard! I just, I meant to hit look at it, but I hit Y instead to give it. <laughs> that was a mistake. Whoops. Don't waste time on unnecessary things. All that matters is finding a way to make yourself stronger. Uh, I don't think she's too happy with that, my bad. Hmm. I pressed the wrong button. My, my post-training break is the most relaxing time of my day. The sensation of your muscles cooling down after heating up during a workout is the only true reward. No matter how many times I experience it, I never get tired. I try to give her some kind of power armor. <laughs> she doesn't need armor. I thought it might be something she would be interested in, but apparently not. Do you exercise every morning, Sakura? Hmm. Unless there are errands that I absolutely can't get out of. Yes, I always do my training. If I don't, I feel restless for the rest of the day. But I'm amazed you can do it every single day. Doesn't it get tough? Huh. I can't say I've ever seen it as tough. It's all so that I can get stronger after all. <laughs> I'm ready to die for the cause. Cheers to that, Relentless. <laughs> And I have to keep on getting stronger because my destiny is to fight. Your destiny is to fight? Mm. From the day I was born, I've been fighting. Heaven sent me to live on as a champion. Wait, did I already try to give her that item before, Sheely? I don't remember that. That's one heck of a legend. Mm. My father was my master, and my every waking moment was spent with him learning to fight. As a child, I sparred with the boxing champions and hit the mat with wrestling gold medalists. I was no match for them when I first began, of course. But before long, they were no match for me. You mean you actually started beating people like that? Mm. I'd say my specialty is solid stand-up that transitions into grappling and a strong ground game. Essentially, it's a complete approach. Anything else just wouldn't make sense. So like mixed martial arts. Oh, the workout every morning. That does sound familiar. Yeah. Six foot four. She towers over me. <laughs> Dang. And you can only become the best by reaching the top of each discipline, then fusing them all together. Stand up fighting, grappling, and a strong ground game. That could only be, well, that's mixed martial arts. Jiu-jitsu is ground game. Uh, Aikido? I, I'm assuming that's striking. I'm not super familiar with it. It's some kind of karate or something, but mixed martial arts is what we ought. Hey, Drolshenka, how are you doing? Hope you're having a good Saturday. Let's do this one. You're basically a mixed martial arts fighter, right? Of course. That's right. It's the most effective real world fighting style, which is why I choose it. I don't want to be just the best in competitions. I want to be the strongest human on earth. I wouldn't have bet against you, that's for sure. But aren't you already the best? Well, no, not yet. 
There's still someone I have to suppress. Really? Huh. Until I can beat him, I'll never become the strongest. You mean there's someone out there stronger than you? Maybe I'll tell you about it another time. If the opportunity presents itself. Presents? You mean because I didn't give you the right present? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> oh, do you think she'd help me grab the last cup? A uh, can of soup at the top shelf of the grocery store? Absolutely she would. <laughs> and you are doing good, Drolshenka. You just got home from watching the kiddo get fourth place in the country for uh, shot put. That is amazing, Drolshenka. Holy cow, way to go, dude. That is awesome. And uh, Relentless, you're taller than average. I'm, I'm a bit taller than average. 6'1", but 6'4", is, yeah, significantly taller for sure. Sakura didn't make a sound as she left. I honestly can't believe there's someone out there stronger than Sakura. Even if they're real, can they really be human? Maybe it was a, uh, android. <laughs> While we're on the subject. I love that. Short King, as my friends call it. I headed back to my room for a little while. Fun size. I love fun size bars. I still have some time. I feel like I'm wasting my time sitting around here. I should go look around. And five foot eight, and you feel short sometimes. Michael, that's like, like totally average, but it really depends on the group, you know? Like sometimes I'm at a place, like when I went to Japan, I just felt like a giant. And then when I hang around my family, I feel like I'm small because a lot of my family is really, really, really tall. Oh, you're five nine, definitely above average for that list, right on. Okay, so... What did he just say we should do? I was having too many conversations. Do we have more free time? Maybe we have more free time. Uh, let's see. Who could we go talk to? Hmm. I feel like we need to know more about her. I don't totally trust her, but she's she was really useful coming up with that lie. Okay, she's in the kitchen. Let's go chat with her. We also have a present to give her. I'm pretty sure she'll like. Maybe I'll just start picking people based on the presents I know work. I think she's like right behind here. Andy is, I think, 5'7"? Five, 5'6 seven? Five, or 5'7". Five, I'm not entirely sure. Makoto, I should tell you, I have recently seen the shadow of death upon you. <laughs> That's just a little joke. Oh, so funny. Thanks. That was a hilarious, Celeste. I appreciate it. Hmm. Should I hang out with Celeste for a while? Let's do it. I don't think we've ever spent time with her. <laughs> it would seem I'm growing used to your deplorable face. This is another aspect of adap adaptation, I suppose. Gosh, when you're rude like that, I don't want to hang out with you. Despite her thinly veiled insults, I spent some time with Celeste. Celeste and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give her a present? Sure, why else do I get these things? And uh, Relentless, your sister is like a foot shorter than you, and she's mad at me for our... and, and your brother stealing all the tall jeans. <laughs> that's significant though, a foot? That's incredible. So she's actually pretty short, she's like four foot something. Okay, let's go with the one that it said like Lolito. I think these bunny earmuffs. If I look at this, it says one of the most popular items from a gothic Lolita designer, Ina Bauer. She looks like gothic Lolita, right? And Sheila, you dated a girl that's six feet tall, and so she was an inch or two taller than you. You've also dated a girl who's five foot. And you don't think height matters a whole lot to you? You find both to be endearing anyway. Oh, 100%, Sheila. Yeah, I've never dated a girl taller than me. But I've dated girls that were like 5'10", so definitely like above average height. And uh, I've also dated girls that were really, really, really short. Like, yeah, right around five foot or so. It's all good. It's all good. That's not the most important part at all. But there is definitely a stigma of girls not necessarily wanting to date um, men that are shorter than them. And, I mean, everybody has their biases, but it sucks that that kind of becomes a constant thing. You know? Hey, thank you, Relentless. You're on top of it. Okay, let's give her the earmuffs. See how this goes. Oh. Yeah, I thought she'd like that. Ah, 
It just so happens that's the one thing I was hoping for has appeared before me. <laughs> it must be a gift from the heavens. I will receive it happily. Does that mean she liked it? <laughs> uh, Makoto, I would like to share something with you. Huh? What is it? <laughs> My perfect gambling strategy. Yes, that's what I was hoping for. Sashima, how are you doing, dude? Just popped in to say hi. You can't say, uh, stay not a fan of these games for reasons. Totally understand, Sashima. We all got our own preferences. But thank you for dropping in and saying hi. I appreciate that. Yeah, followers, viewers, and primes. Okay, do you guys know what could have caused this? Maybe it's an error, I don't know. But like after stream, I never look at my stream statistics while I am streaming. Like I have no idea how many people are watching. I don't wanna know. It's better to hide that information. But I do look at it after the fact. Like tomorrow I might look at the numbers. And I was looking at the numbers and it said that I had gotten like, I don't know, like 15 or 20 prime subs yesterday. That didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know. I was here. I looked at the history of the stream. That didn't happen. But when I look at like the um, influx of like, because it shows you like the monetary stuff on Twitch too, it showed that we had gotten a certain amount of money in prime subs. It breaks it out by like paid subs, gifted subs, prime subs. And prime subs, they're interesting. They don't automatically happen. You have to actually go someplace and press a button to get a prime sub done. So they're not automatic. So they can't just happen in the background. And I don't remember them having. So I don't know what happened. I clicked on one of those links. <laughs> no, if I clicked on one of those links, Sheely, not only would I not get more subs, I probably just get a virus. So I have no idea what's going on. Twitch is reporting this, but I, I don't see it in my history. Now, one thing that's kind of hard to track is paid subs. Paid subs can actually happen when I'm not live. Because if you keep your subscription active and it automatically happens, it could happen on a Wednesday when I'm not streaming. So I'll see like a little tick of like money for that stream or for that day when I wasn't live. But then when they come the next day, they press the button to share that they subscribed and that's when I actually see it. But you get the money when the charge happened, of course. And it could be that people subbed and didn't click to get an alert. I, I think that's different though, Frost, because I didn't get any alert. Well, I don't know though, maybe. If they don't get the alert, Frost, do I not get it in my thing? We had a lot of people watching that stream. I don't know, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it was weird, but like, I don't know, there must have been like 20 people or something that did it and didn't actually do the alert. I was very, I mean, I was excited to see it, but it seemed like an error to me, I don't know. And depending on what view you're using to see events, it's possible for them to not show up in that queue. It's true, yeah, because I'm just looking at recent events, so I guess if they don't actually share it, it wouldn't pop up, huh? That makes sense, actually, yeah. Maybe it was a lot of people doing Prime subs that dropped in, but just didn't say anything. I wish they would have shared, so I could have been, like, you know, very thankful for it. it kind of sucks to get support and not being able to thank them, but hey, either way, that's awesome. If anybody of you, you did it, thank you. <laughs> And if you use the stream elements activity queue, it primarily tracks it based off of chat messages. So if someone doesn't share it, you don't know. That's, I think that's what it was. Yeah, that might have been it. Hmm. You know what I could do, actually? I can actually look at the subscriber list and look for names I don't recognize. I guess that's the easiest way to do it. See if it's actually real. Or maybe it's a weird accounting error and Twitch will take it all away. I have no idea. Okay, let's get this perfect uh, gambling strategy. Is there really such a thing? Indeed. Of course there is. Are you ready? Please pay attention. Whatever the game, you must have a mind for strategy. This will allow you to increase your odds of winning. However, the exciting part about gambling is that there is a power which can overwhelm any strategy. There is? Indeed. That power is luck. Thanks, that was super helpful. Luck. Actually... There are only two types of luck, good and bad. There is no in-between. And that luck is built into every human at the moment of conception, like a computer program. Okay, now she's going off the rails. Is that okay? It's like a stat, <laughs> like in Oblivion or uh, Skyrim or something. Uh, some call it fate, but the bottom line is luck is life. Well. Oh, that's right, Frost, that's our name. We are the ultimate lucky student. I forgot about that. Do you see what I'm saying? You mean that's your perfect strategy? <laughs> Correct. 
You see, I was programmed to have good luck when it comes to gambling. This is why I have never lost. So that's all there is to it. <laughs> I mean, if that was the case, I would just do some really big, like, uh, lottery and be done with it. If we're going to the casino, just go ahead and make $50 million in one try. You are the ultimate lucky student, yes? Does this perhaps exceed my own luck? One day, I hope to put to the test. We should play a poker. See who wins, right? Yeah, <laughs> dump intelligence, put it all in luck. <laughs> yeah, hang on, let me upgrade my luck stat. I remember Fallout. The original Fallout games had a luck stat. I hope you are well. Hmm, well then, have a nice day. Without another word, Celeste quickly disappeared. I'd say my life's been more bad luck than good lately. Gambling's probably not a great idea for me. It, it didn't say we are the good luckiest student. We're just the ultimate luckiest student. Could also be bad luck, right? Yeah, just be really dumb, but stumble your way through luck. You know what's really funny? In the old Fallout games, if you give your character very, very low intelligence, you can make it so low, you can't actually speak. Which is very interesting in an RPG about speaking to a lot of characters. But every time you try to talk to somebody, your character just kind of grunts like a caveman. Where they ask you a question, you're just like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're just like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> you just have to keep playing through the game without talking to people. It's so ridiculous, but it's really funny. And it's a viable way to play, too. The later, like, 3D first-person fallouts kind of got rid of a lot of that. But uh, in the old ones, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, I want, did New Vegas do that as well? Because that was created by some of the original Fallout creators. I need to play New Vegas. I've never played that one. After parting ways with Celeste, I went back to my room. Yeah, it's one of those things you wouldn't expect because talking is usually such a, you know, required function of RPGs. Take that out. You better be really strong or really good with a gun because that's how you're going to solve all of your situations. There's no diplomacy with zero intelligence. Nice. Oh, that's cool, <laughs> Sheila. I love it. This is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked. An entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Is that day two or day three this chapter? Okay, then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. You know, each one of these chapters is like basically as long, if not longer, than, say, like a chapter in like Life is Strange, like a big DLC chapter, you know? Pretty good length. Nighttime already. I guess I'll just go to bed for today. Yeah. Oh, who's the ultimate lockpick, DJ? Oh, here's our weird dream. Hey, there's like some food on the side or something. What is that? Happy New Day. I'm the kind of guy, I don't want to celebrate a new year. I want to celebrate the dawn of every new day. Because every new day deserves celebrating. So... Once again, Happy New Day! Didn't really have much to do with anything, huh? <laughs> Funny, talking about it that way, you could apply that to so many different things, Relentless. <laughs> I like that quote. And Outer Worlds is basically New Vegas, but space with good graphics. I've heard good it's good. Morning, I haven't tried everyone. it, Sheila. It is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. You know, Spider Monkey um, actually put out like a, you know, vote on what his next game to stream was going to be. And that was one of the ones that I voted for was uh, Outer Worlds, because I know he's such a big Fallout fan, I thought he would like it. Get ready to greet another beautiful day! Yeah, I do have New Vegas on Steam. I just never got around to playing it. I think I got the Ultimate Edition, too. I better get to the dining hall. I'd say it'd be fun to stream, but I think it'd just be too long. It'd be a long game. Leave the area? Yes. Okay, hopefully nobody's dead yet. Oh. Uh-oh. Taka and Kyoko are not here today. That's not good. You know? Kyoko's still on guard duty, probably. Hmm. 
I have no idea about Taka. Damnation! May as well forget about that guy. So, um... Of course he doesn't like him. He's fighting for the same laptop. Uh, you don't have to get so mad. You know? They're rivals in love. What are you gonna do? Hmm. Don't put me on the same level as that... That virgin. I might catch his virginity. But... Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, nah. My guess is you're already infected. Huh? Wait, can you really catch it? Oh, Hina. Hina. Come on. Yes, uh, it's like you take the more modern Fallout mechanics, but you get the story writers from the first two games, which generally people think have the best story, and make a perfect cocktail, right? <laughs> Taco was a witness. Had to take a shot. <laughs> Stop being vulgar. Let's eat breakfast. But as soon as my hands approached my food, what are we eating? <laughs> oh, crap. Ooh. That voice. The doors opened... Uh, the doors to the dining hall exploded open and a figure appeared. <laughs> Every time I see her, I just think she's killed everybody already. So in the end... So it's you, Genocide Jack, and... That's enough. But don't bother asking why we arrived at the same time. The answer should be obvious. Yep. Yep, I'll give you a hint. Uh -huh. I'm wearing red lingerie today. What do they say? Like, I've also heard the term like, sex is always the best with the crazy ones. Yeah, yeah, Kuya is going for that. Huh? Um, I don't think anyone wanted to know. Huh? Hold on a sec. You? Huh? Mm -hmm. What's you your... that certain age? Oh no! What is going on here? What's your top power level? Like, 35, 22, 33? You start out big on top to try and look thinner down south. You look at your melons. They're seriously gargantuan. Do you dunk them in milk every night or something? Oh my gosh, he's so ridiculous. Ooh. You're starting to freak me out. No forgiveness! You lay a finger on Hina, and I'll show you no mercy. <sighs> <laughs> I think she's going for him, John. 100% she is. So, what do you want? Surely you're not here to join us for breakfast. Naturally. Of course not. I came here, or I came to hear a story. A story? A story that nobody's bothered to tell me yet. Are you talking about alter ego? Mm. Why would we keep you in the loop of everything? You want to go do your own thing. Sorry, we can't talk about that right now. What? Why not? Huh. Because of certain circumstances. Ugh. Up until now, you haven't given a crap about anything, and now you're all concerned? I don't buy it. It's all clear now. I've just made a decision. When we get out of here, I'm going to feed your body to the vultures. Jeez, dude. <laughs> what kind of messed up dictator are you? What? But this isn't a democracy. Or would you exclude those who don't fit in your tyrannical majority? That's not what we're doing. That's fine. Well, whatever. If nothing else, tell me what's going on with Taka. When I saw him yesterday, I happened to notice something seemed off. So I was curious. Indeed. Taka has become utterly useless. Celeste, you don't have to say it like that. I see. Did his spirit collapse or something? Was he unable to withstand this environment? Those men who clothe themselves in the cheap fabric of justice are often the first to fall. <laughs> but perhaps that will make things all the more interesting. Oh no. Such ignorance. Let me leave you with a bit of advice. Don't come to rely on fa false camaraderie, or you'll reap its bitter reward. What the heck? That's why you came? To give us that amazing advice? Let's see. And when the wind is low and the fire is hot, the vulture waits to see what rots. Oh, that's a pretty nice uh, quote. I like that. And you seriously don't get why so many people thirst over Byakuya? Uh, He's just an a-hole. I don't like him at all. He's always been a jerk. He's smart, you know? Still a jerk. <laughs> it seems I'm unwelcome here. Then I will grant your desire and remove myself. Mm, yes. Yeah, 
Let's get out of here. Stop talking. You don't need to come with me. Hey, Dapper. What's up, Dapper? Good to see you, dude. You don't have to play hard to get, Master. You could just play hard. <laughs> oh, Jill. Hm. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, I thought he was smart. I guess not. Byakuya started to slowly back out of the room. He started to pick up speed, and soon he was sprinting out of the dining hall. He ran away? Now he's running hard to get? I see. Wait, 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 wait. Um. So, at the end there, what was that all about? Uh, um. Uh, just now, Byakuya was like... Um. Maybe he's just a mean guy who starts acting different or getting all flustered when things change. Hmm. Guess so. <laughs> and why are Hina's PRBs always so shiny? I think it's, Sheely, it's uh, sweat. Uh, she was working out, right? <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> Seriously, Dapper, that tongue is just, it's like she's a demon, right? Uh, those of us left in the dining hall finished our breakfast, then went back to our rooms. Free time. I'm guessing it's free time. Hmm, what to do today? Yep. Okay, who are we going to spend some time with? Let's take a look. We haven't spent much time with him, but I don't necessarily really want to. I don't know if it makes sense to, like, kind of spend a bit of time with everybody or force a lot of time on one player. <laughs> Sheely, it might be like how some people like to... You know, if they're real muscly, they oil themselves up. Something like that. Weird. Some people do that. Taka's last lost his mind. Um, Maybe let's go talk to Hero. We haven't done much with Hero lately. I don't know if we have a present for him. We'll try. <laughs> See, if Makato can't kill anybody, then I can't kill anybody. It purposely shines him. That's what I was thinking. Okay, was it this floor? No. Looks like it's third floor in the rec room. Okay. There it is. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of figuring my way around here. <laughs> yeah, that's the only piece that she oils up. Um, was this the rec room? That's a library. There's 2B. Where was the rec room? Oh, it wasn't even this floor. I'm on the second floor. My bad. Got to go up one more time. Like, this doesn't seem like it. I think it's this one right here. <laughs> Gotta call me out like that, Relentless. <laughs> it's true. Yo! Yo, Makoto, what's happening? Hmm, should I hang out with Hiro for a while? Sure. Maybe we'll get our fortune right again. Hmm. Uh, you wanna hang out with me? It's not like some occult well, then, mystery. Have I got a story for you? My research revealed a surprising connection between Tokyo Tower and the lost Lemurian civilization. Hero spent a lot of time talking about stuff that didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> oh, absolutely you are. Hero grew a little closer today. Would you like to give him a present? Yeah, what do we got? I thought we had something that made sense for Hero. Was it the bracelet? A handcrafted item made with a needle and thread. They say that once you put it on, you will never come off again. Maybe that... No, probably the crystal skull. This seems very sp spiritual, doesn't it? A skull carved from pure rock of crystal. Some think skulls like this were created hundreds of years ago. He likes this kind of thing. I think he'll like this. Huh? You're saying I can have this? All of a sudden, I feel invigorated. 
I feel awake. I feel like I like you. <laughs> Hero is so pleased with something I gave him makes him makes me happy. Yo. Hey Makato, what's up, my brother and fellow mother lover? Come again? Can, can we can we strike that last sentence from the record? Uh, let's raise our semi siblings upright, okay? Uh, stop talking about that. Oh, so then. So you're ready for the next round? Never. Actually, how do you do your fortune telling anyway? I saw you doing palm readings and stuff, and you didn't use any tools or anything. Hmm. Yeah, mother lover. What? I mean, I love my mom. But I would not call myself a mother lover. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you knew about divination tools. Sounds like you know your way around a spirit world. It's like that song uh, from Saturday Night Live. What was it? Dick in a Box? <laughs> Reminds me of that. And not that particular song, but didn't they do like a remix of that? But it was about mother lovers or something? <laughs> yeah, excuse me, hero. Would you care to be eliminated? <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure you need to know that much to know about those kind of tools. No. But now that I know you're an expert, I have a question for you. A correct answer gets you another discount. No thanks. Could it be? There are 22 cards known as Major Arcana and 56 cards known as Minor Arcana. Generally, the cards from the Major Arcana are used for divination. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is this tarot cards? Major and Minor Arcana. The Major Arcana cards are used to tell the future. That must be, I assume, Tarot. I don't know for sure. A Relentless would know for sure. <laughs> hey! Oh, I know. You're talking about Tarot cards. What? What? Whoa! Gloriously correct. I will now tell you your fortune for a measly 600 bones. Wow, really? It's something I'd never say. I've had enough fortune telling for one lifetime. And Shirley, you play Persona. I know all about this stuff. <sighs> Most of my tarot card reading knowledge came from Phantasmagoria. Ah, uh, I see. Well, if you ever change your mind, you know where to find me. Sure thing. Anyway, getting back to what I asked you about before. If you don't use any tools or whatever, how do you do your fortune telling? Don't be mean. Well, don't be fooled. I have my own techniques. For example, I employ numerology. Numerology? Yo. It uses a mathematical formula to predict the future based on birth dates, letter numbering, all that. But I didn't see you doing anything like that either. Hmm. Well, it's more of an inspirational style of fortune telling. Some kind of unknown power just acts through you and suddenly, bam, you've got the info. You're talking about intuition. How about that? Don't try and describe it with such a cheesy word. But if it's not intuition, then it's got to be some kind of supernatural power. It's not like some occult mystery. Don't compare my clairvoyance to some occult bullcrap. I hate the occult. Take that crap somewhere else. I feel like this guy always gets offended when we try to talk to him about this. You hate the occult? Well? Yup. Now here's some good news. Act now, and I'll throw an extra bonus for your reading. She's like, do you guys remember Miss Cleo? It was like this like phone psychic hotline for a long time back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. It was so scammy and it was proven to be totally fake and BS. But like, he kind of sounds like that. Yeah, call me now for your free reading. <laughs> that one, yeah, yeah. He's always trying to sell us on crap, isn't he? And you have three tarot decks on your desk right now. Oh, that's awesome, Relentless. Where was I? I was at the mall. I went into like a Spencer's, one of those places where you get like weird gift stuff. And they had all kinds of cool looking tarot card decks. Made me think of you, Relentless. I use white magic to record a CD of spirit messages I receive from the luxury suite of heaven. Five seconds of this baby and you'll be witnessing miracles and communing with, for, with angels for days. And as you said, hate the occult. What the heck? Hey, business is business. The more I talk to him, the less I understand. Sweet. We haven't gotten a new ability in a while, but we're getting our skill points up. And Sheila, you find it weird how characters in Persona 3 use spiritual guns to shoot themselves in the head to attack their persona. It's brutal. Absolutely brutal. I haven't played the game, but I've seen that in some videos. 
<laughs> he burns white magic onto a CD. And um, I'm just going to stay CX. Welcome, CX, to the stream. How are you doing, dude? So what's this game about anyways? You just downloaded the Anniversary Edition from Game Pass. That's right, it is on Game Pass. So in this game, just like kind of like a Cliff Notes version, not where we're at right now, but just the setup. Apparently, there's this academy that all these people that are really experts in their field wanted to go to. They get accepted, they all show up, and immediately everybody's kind of knocked out. And when they wake up, the entire academy is locked down. Where nobody can get out, they're all stuck there. And there's this really creepy teddy bear that's put them in some sort of death match. Where the only way for them to get out of this academy is to kill somebody else and survive until the end. If they can do that and kill everybody else, then they get free. So, of course, normal people don't want to go around murdering each other, but he keeps giving incentives for you to kill all of your feather, feather class, feather, fellow classmates. So it's pretty cool. It's a very interesting idea. And that's why they moved to cards in Persona 4. Everyone got knocked out by me. Nice. Yes, I think it was added to Game Pass earlier this year, actually, like pretty recently. Okay, I shook off Hero Sales Pitch and headed back to my room for a while. And CX, if you're curious, like, not just what it's about, but what it plays like, it's like a part visual novel, part adventure game, where you're going to spend a lot of time reading, picking up items, figuring out puzzles, that kind of thing. And has very interesting, wild, wacky characters. If you like the crazy parts of anime, you'll get a kick out of it. All right, I still have some time. I can't just sit around doing nothing. I should go find something to do. All right, let's go hang out with one more person and then that'll probably kick off something bad, I'm sure. Let's see, who should we hang out with next? Maybe Hifumi. Hifumi's weird, he scares me. He's way too horny all the time, but he also doesn't seem like a totally evil person. So first floor warehouse, let's go find him. <laughs> it's part visual novel, part I will make my words physically hurt you kind of game. Oh. Let's see, the warehouse, I think it's just right down here. I think this is where he's hiding. <laughs> Relentless. 218. No, no, yours, yours seems much more, in a weird way, wholesome and, like, fun. His... Like, I, I think if he found a dead body that looked like an anime character, he would do terrible things to it. That's how I feel about Hifumi. Ah, well, hello. Ah, Mr. Nagi. Funny meeting you here. Mm-hmm. I salute you. You got it. Salute. I just saluted you. Did you see? That was the Hifumi ultimate salute. Damn. Uh, do I want to hang out with Hifumi? <laughs> it looks like he's trying to get himself into there. No, oh, the, the fun kind of horny is the best kind of horny. Absolutely. Not the borderline creepy, maybe serial killer kind of horny. Oh, really, DJ? I don't think we've gotten to that yet. Uh, cosplayers these days are totally ignorant of the origin, the history, the significance of their hobby. And if you don't know your history, you can never have a complete cosplay experience. So it would seem. So Mr. Nagy, prepare for a gloriously detailed history of the cosplay world. Now, in 1955, I like it how they like fast forward to like, let's skip all this BS, you know? <laughs> oh, it never gets brought up in this game? Well, if we play the sequels, I'll find out, huh? I listened to Hifumi's half-obsessed ranting for way too long. Hifumi and I grow a little closer today. Would you like to give him a present? Oh, we definitely have to have something for him, right? What do we have here? I mean, he'd probably like a kitten hair clip. We actually don't have that. Oh, this one maybe? This is uh, very popular with men these days, but to be honest, although it does attract the ladies, most guys hate the smell. Although he doesn't really care about ladies, he just wants, you know, 2D artwork. So maybe that's not for him. Oh, this one? A scarf belonging to a certain masked hero. 
It's tattered and worn due to countless battles it's been through, though. I think you would like this about heroes, comics, cosplay. It sounds like it's perfect for him. Mm -hmm. If Fumi gets up and seems to want to join the party. <laughs> oh, he's talking. It's like third person. Allow Hifumi to join you? Does that mean he liked it? <laughs> I see quality in you, Mr. Nagi. True quality. Mr. Nagi! And that's why I've decided to present you with my lecture on the nature of fan fiction. I thought that's what we just did. I guess that was cosplay. If we're going to be friends, you must be fully informed. I will permit no fanfic bigotry whatever, whatsoever. I don't think I have any fanfic bigotry. I mean, I don't really know anything about that kind of geeky stuff anyway. See, there it is. To you, fanfic equals geeky, right? But is that all the word is worth? Huh? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> but that's okay. Because I take the word geek as a compliment. For you see, there is nobody on earth so full of knowledge as a geek. Yes, indeed. In a sense, a geek is like an expert. That's right, a total expert. A successful musician must necessarily be a music geek. A movie, good movie director is a movie geek, you see? It's those experts, those geeks, who open up the world to others. So when you say a thing like, writing fanfic is geeky, That's it. you're I'm recognizing sure us it. as true experts. Okay, so um, what exactly is fanfic then? Here we go. Have any of you written fanfics yourself? <laughs> My coach is like, I made a terrible mistake. Uh, our super direct question for the win. Mm -hmm. Basically, we have all different kinds of stores and events, right? Where These are where groups of holy warriors sell their own stuff based on games, comics, anime, everything. Uh, I know you have Relentless, that's awesome. And the stuff these people make is fanfic? <laughs> Comics are the most common creation, but it also includes games, movies, even merchandise. Mm. By the way, mm. there's a name for when a group of fanfic creators come together. Specifically, it's any organized group that comes together to release their work. A group that c comes together to release their work. I'm thinking it's either Circle or Menagerie. But I think I'm going to go with Circle. And Nate, you did when you were a Ting, and it was pretty awful in retrospect. It's, it's probably fun to go back and read some of it and just cringe at so many things that you maybe did way back then, right? Prim, not me writing fanfic right now. Couldn't be me. <laughs> I'm going to go with Circle. Is it a circle? Da, 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 da. It sure is. Nice. I actually didn't know that for sure. Of course you knew that. I mean, it's only common sense. I certainly hope you don't expect me to explain such common sense topics every time. <laughs> you wiped it from all existence? Well, Nate, I mean, you're in luck. If you only deleted it off the hard drive or formatted your drive, you might still be able to recover it with some tools. And Sheely, actual nerds are typically the extremely knowledgeable ones, while geeks are knowledgeable in their interests, but they focus on the social side of it. Oh, there's a way of thinking of it. Nice. Hey, Zakobo, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you again. Yeah, we're just chatting with him in the uh, the warehouse. <laughs> He's telling us all about fan fiction. Um, but yeah, I always kind of thought about being nerd or geeky. It could be anything. You know, somebody that obsesses way too much about football and like the stats and plays fantasy football. You're absolutely a nerd. You just nerd out about football. Me, I nerd about games and movies. Like, we all have our own thing, you know? And geeks are supposed to be like that, uh, like nerdy when it comes to trends. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, I like that explanation of geek. Um, well, like I said, I don't know too much about this stuff. Without a doubt. This goes well beyond I don't know too much. Mm -hmm. But I guess I can't blame you. The propaganda never touches on that. So, as a fanfic ambassador, by the time I'm done with you, you'll be itching to buy a premium pass to the next fanfic con. <laughs> right? Obviously, he's excited, but... <laughs> That's it for today. I hope you're excited for your next lesson. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for the two of us. I'm kind of scared to see what the future has in store for the two of us. Goodness. Hey, we got a new skill. We got handiwork. Nice. After we were done, I decided to head back to my room for a while. 
and you check the wiki and it appears that you're uh, straight on wrong. Oh, do you mean about the character having like a bad past? Huh, something by the door. Oh, there's a note here. Okay, you know how I love to leave on cliffhangers. This is probably a good place to stop. It is past four o'clock and I do have to get going. We're gonna go get cleaned up and pick up some friends and um, we're gonna go do an escape room, which I'm super excited for and grab some ramen. But uh, as, as a Kobo, so we're still in chapter three. I guess the big stuff you missed this stream is we found a laptop that Chihiro used to program an AI on that we can like chat with and talk to. It was really wild. And she, the AI actually looks and sounds just like Chihiro. So we're letting that computer, uh, that program kind of analyze the laptop and see what kind of information it can get. Because the laptop was here before we came. So we're hoping the laptop has some kind of secrets onto maybe how to get out of here. Also Taka kind of like lost his mind and uh, I mean, he was sort of like a zombie and couldn't interact with us. But now, Taka, after talking with the AI laptop, which pretended to be Mondo, now is sort of a combination of Taka and Mondo in his psyche. He's, he's lost his mind a little bit. It's creepy. It's weird. And Zakobo. Yeah, sorry about the timing. I know you come in right when it has to end. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we, we do two different streams on Tuesday and Thursday. We do streams at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And then on uh, Saturdays, we do it much earlier at noon Pacific time. And it helps people in different time zones too. And how dare you have a real life when we want to see more of this game. I know it's tough, Nate, it's tough. Especially when you're getting into it. I want to see more too. But beyond just like after four hours of streaming this kind of game, my throat's killing me. Uh, I do have plans, unfortunately. <laughs> and he went Super Saiyan, that's right. I remember that. And thanks for the stream. Congrats on the promotion. Oh, thank you so much, Rapscallion. I appreciate it. You have a good one. And thank you for following the channel. All right. Yeah, pull an all-nighter. Unfortunately, that doesn't help with this, Michael, because my plans wouldn't help me pull an all-nighter. I just have to go somewhere now. All right, so let's go ahead and save it before we go. I think... I always get these dates mixed up. I think this is the oldest one. So let's overwrite that one. There we go. How about you guys? Any other fun plans this week? Do you guys have anything going on today or tomorrow? Or for the weekend? Tomorrow, I'm pretty open. I have a lot of things I have to do, but uh, 